tells the story This war has many shades We'd wake up every morning And before I'll join the fleet I'll take a swig from last night's big wave That's sitting on the desk Feed up a new ship And then be on the way A bridge far and wide And we kill many ships We were guided by an F Team saw beauty in the calm I heard the tales of many lives Told a few stories of my own I had gay camps all around me So I was never alone Watching newbies showing up Other newbies growing up Sometimes they were so messed up They didn't have a clue I am saying the war is over We waited with all of you I've been sitting over here In a fleet with you Fleet with you in a fleet with you. I've been sitting over here in a fleet with you. This shot for the mighty FCs, the whelps, the winds, and piracy. This shot for the mentors that raise beasts. So what's going to be the first thing we want to bring up, Don? Do we want to bring up 
brave continue to be burning, or do we want to bring out well, stuff that's happening? We're on now. We're on. Oh, what's so, up? I my my shirt is delayed. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi everyone. How it goes. Uh, welcome to uh, Theater Thursdays. Uh, yes, it looks different. I uh, I am currently sitting on my bed on a laptop because everything's packed up for the move. We're excited. We now have Eric as a, our wonderful uh, interim tech man while I'm moving. Um, so that's going to be fantastic. Uh, welcome to Theater Thursdays. Uh, yeah, Don's wasn't working. Uh, Don, fix your internet. Um, so, welcome to Theta Thursdays. We have a lot to talk about today. Um, <laughs> at least I didn't accidentally leak how Theta Thursday is a broke and can't afford to move to Quirius. That is correct. That uh, is so I guess, Don, <laughs> do we want to segue into Brave and just how broke they are? Uh, uh, I think well, we were talking about this last week with Leaks. Mifune, let's for finish introducing okay. everyone. Okay, and we'll go over a list of potential topics today. Uh, but we do have a guest hopefully joining us here shortly. Um, so you've got, obviously got me, Don Rea, um, my co-host Mifune. Oh, hold on. Our guest is here. Oh, our guest is here. Hi, Loki. Hey, hey. Hey. Howdy. Everybody, the, you'll see him here on the stream in a second. Uh, Loki Choco Chips is here with us from Dread Bomb, and he's just gonna hang out with us and talk about whatever he wants to talk about, or uh, you know, if that's hopefully it's about how things are going out and catch. But uh, it is not required. We're not dragging Dirk down for a little while, so Dirk, you'll have to wait. Drag him down. Oh my god. Hold on. There we go. All right. Anyways. Um, so we've got me, Don Rea, my co-host, Mifune Sorgod. Our special guest today is Loki Chaco Chips. We are also followed by our, our new producer, Greg Hazahaza, our tech man, Eric Asmok, and our re recurring guest, uh, Dox Heckard and Dirk Statil. Is that how we're <laughs> described? Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I seem to remember us running your show last week, but no, we're recurring guests. Stop. This, yeah. is how, this is how we're... Appreciate it. That's how you got I sucked in the push to talk. You give me attitude today. <laughs> don't even get paid. I don't so get Mifune, paid either. Mifune, you're claiming that that's hey, your bedroom, but uh, it looks suspiciously like a Wendy's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> There's no baby Yoda uh, that's Wendy's stuffed in a Wendy's bathroom. Walls are, uh, yeah, definitely uh, a giant uh, two foot large uh, baby Yoda. Uh, is definitely no, in the no, Wendy's bathroom. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. That'll be your co-host today. So, um, we've had a lot happen in a few days. Uh, definitely a lot's happened since last week. And then we've had some big stuff that came out today. We had some big fights yesterday. But since we do have a special guest here, and I don't know how long Loki can stay, we can uh, start off with you if you're okay with that, Loki? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, tell everybody who you are, and where you're from, and your favorite uh, color. My favorite color. Mm -hmm. So, I'm Loki Choco Chips. I am a member of Dreadbomb. I'm the CEO of Banana Republic. Which is and not that's... Alliance leadership. <laughs> Just a corp. I got a question for you, Loki. That's our disclaimer. What, what do you mean? I'm not part of Alliance leadership? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, because if you are, then I have to go ask permission. So for everybody, oh, yeah, I've, think... yeah, I've never. I'm not part of alliance leadership. Are you kidding me? Exactly. Totally. No. No. Actually, there are a lot of alliances that don't um, include uh, corp CEOs as part of their like, little director board or whatever it is that they have. Like, for example, pretty yeah. sure snuff snuff runs like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm part of alliance leadership at all in any in any capacity. Uh, my favorite color, I'm going to go with blue, I guess. Like navy blue. Good, cho good choice. I approve so far. So, Loki, whose side are you on, anyways? We are on the side of content, my friend. Content. The side of neutrality. The answer. Look, you guys got this whole fucking, like... It's the thing. The thing about Eve is you've always had the, this Gurgoon or this Progoon kind of thing, right? And, and typically Panfam... 
has been on the side of Gurgoon, typically, right? Although there were times where, like, Pandemic Legion was working with the goons when I was, you know, still playing this game. Like a so, monk? Well, I mean, it happened. It's a couple of years ago. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But the point is, is that, you know, it's just this, like, dualistic relationship. It's, like, good versus evil. And we got to, like, fight the bad guys. And it's like, no, there's a whole other group of people that just want to PvP. They want to have fun. They want to accomplish things in the game. Uh, you know, and they don't mind being the bad guys if they have to be. Like, who cares? And I think that's where that's where Dreadbomb definitely fall in. That's where I fall in for sure. Oh, no. So have you been uh, getting some pretty uh, pretty dank kills lately with uh, Dreadbomb? Hold on. I'm being accused of Dominark. If you want to come hang out, you can come hang out. I never said you couldn't. FYI. No, she only has Dominarch, the good, the good come host. Come be a regular guest. <laughs> oh, yeah. I totally forgot <laughs> to say to you on that. I'm a host on Trash Talk. Recurring guest, sorry. Recurring guest. Anyway, right, um, a recurring guest. Dank kill males. Uh, I mean, it's been up and down. The the whole thing, like, we've been focusing mainly on fire in, like, uh, Great Wildlands, Scalding Pass, Impasse, like, or not Impasse, but uh, Immensi, like, th those areas. Um, and taking fights where we can, uh, taking fights where we can get them, really, uh, has been more of the issue. It seems that we're massively outforming people some days, and then other days, uh, you know, we're not, and then we're, we're able to take the fights. But uh, it's been up and down. Um, it hasn't been, like, a steady supply of, like, amazing content or anything like that. Uh, Is that because they're all full of rotting watermelons of dirt crabs worse than anything that Goonswarm ever had? Well, the reason that I left Nullsec, right, was because I was in this I was in this situation where like I almost wasn't allowed to take a fight sometimes because it's like, well, no, uh, they they outnumber us uh, by X amount. We we couldn't possibly we're not going to win that. The the odds are not in our favor, so we're not going to take this fight. And I'm like, dude, come on. Like, let me let me go out and fight and everyone's like, no. Nah. And that's, you know, kind of how things go when it comes to important important things anyway important ops and, and relatively large uh fleet comps where we might welcome an entire immune fleet like god forbid so uh you know i i'm gonna say that that culture more than likely exists in fire um i just think that also they probably could use i don't want to say better fcs but like maybe more experienced fcs uh maybe their line members are not quite as competent um as maybe like dread bombs uh so there's a lot more hesitation on their side to take fights that honestly like if it were reverse i would take that fight and then you can you can bark all up and down you want that we have the we have we have uh cap superiority in the region which i think is a bunch of bullshit personally uh if you look at the numbers just the numbers of people in the alliances so the, the number of people in dread bomb the number of people uh, in Deepwater Hooligans, for example, versus the number of people in the entire Fire Coalition. And then you're going to tell me that you can't get enough caps together <laughs> to fight a couple hundred guys? Come on, dude. It's a bunch of bullshit. And it's, you know, they just don't want to take the fights because they don't want to They don't want to feed. The, the, the economy, I get it. The economy is really bad, too. But at the end of the day, though, like, it's too bad, I guess, to a certain degree. But, I mean, I wouldn't expect any less from, like, like true null seckers, to be honest, and and I also I, I put goons in that category as well. By the way, I hope you guys who, who okay consistently that. gives you good fights? Uh, well, snuff, for example, <laughs> they give us fights. I don't know if they're good fights. They're uh, <laughs> usually, I mean, there are very few times where snuff won't on dock and do something. Um, so consistently, I've so I've snuff, snuff throughout my career, but they're snuff they're has been doing a, a lot recently. They have been, haven't yeah. they? They what are you talking haven't. about? They, they, they with, literally with have took. What What are you talking about? They literally took they're down the Bazgarin Sotio and the Bazgarin Keepstar, and they're gonna go hit the Ignoitan Keepstar next because yep. no one's stopping the them. Keepstar. They've They've killed. John, they're John, you're, a little, you're a little bit behind. They've hit the Ignoitan Keepstar. Oh, did they already get it um, done today or yesterday? Uh, I I haven't checked it in the last few hours i've been a bit busy but uh they were due to hit the ignite and keep star at around 1700 earlier today and then uh the satio and the tatara at the same time and like i say i haven't checked it but uh let me i actually i've got an alt there let me log it in that alt and then we can get back to this and Dominic, if you're trying to talk, it's just sitting open also i apologize if you hear my cat singing a song to her people 
She, I, there's nothing I can do to stop it. So. She's, she's, she's summoning yelling. the blood gods of all cats. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. And for those saying that we, uh, there's apparently mumble sounds or whatever. I am not running the tech for this show. That would be Eric, and I believe he might be AFK. But I, I did message him to uh, let him know that he's got no. What? 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 There should be no notification on. What are you talking about? Your uh, I guess according to chat, you are hearing either mumble sounds or Slack or Pigeon or whatever. Mm. Um. We'll see. I'll, I'll go look. Out. I'll figure it out. New PC, guys. Sorry. I'll fix Eric it. Eric really wanted to, like, stress test his computer, so he's like, let me stream everything. I'm like, all right, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. We need this. So, so speaking hey, of Eric. structures being destroyed, you guys all saw it yeah. the today, right? Yeah, so that is, uh, that's the other big thing that came up today, and I've been shoving it in every Pappy member's face, just like, <laughs> because they were, like, super excited about killing one of our really expensive okay. Satias this weekend. Right. But before before we get into this, and uh, I I tout the INN article that just went live about this, um, I can confirm that everything in Ignoiton has been reinforced. Uh, that is the Keepstar, the Tatara, and the Satio. Uh, we're looking at just under three days for most of these things. Um. So yeah, it, it, the Ignoiton complex is going to die very soon. Uh, the, the, it, it'll be dead by Sunday. Looks like Tau is uh, bored, maybe? Uh, I think, uh, like, Tau is... You know how people start... Like, a toddler will see if their parents are paying attention to them when they get kind of, like, semi-left alone, or, like, maybe a young kid is, like... Okay, I'm not supposed to touch those cupcakes, but mom's not here. Is she really gonna know? And so he's eaten one cupcake. Uh, so and there's a uh, whole plate of cupcakes. I I have the best response to this, and it's uh, a response that I, uh, I I posted an article on this on INN earlier, like uh, about 24 hours ago, and. Uh, yeah, with uh, with Snuff suggesting that they simply cannot tolerate a Freeport Keep star in their back garden when talking to Vili, it appears that Snuff are taking advantage of the war in Vietnam to once again establish themselves as the big fish in the small pond that is low sex space. You really wanted to say that, didn't you? I I love that sentence. Are just they are they it big grew, fish in like, your angler games? What they're they're not in the angler games. <laughs> and I, so, feel, I believe you filled up, right? Yeah, like we're, we're, I mean, we're full, the angry ends are full up, but snuff, snuff throwing shit at Fortizars and keep stars in in low sec. It's not unusual. They just normally can't get the the free reign that they have based on the fact that most of the blocks would normally normally they can't at least it. they'll be able to we'd, maybe we'd normally at least give a shit. More. Right? We'd normally exactly. at least give a shit. Well, didn't you guys go down there a little bit on a, a goon deployment at some point and, and fuck around with Snuff a bit? Yeah. How did that I go? I mean, it wasn't, a, it, it wasn't a deployment. It was a SIG deployment. Okay. And I got to do some fleets. I actually ran a fleet against Alpha Star Pilot, so myself. And I did pretty dang good, considering. So here's the thing, uh, right? Like, considering it was, was Alpha Star Pilot. Yeah, well, and, and it was even. You know, uh, I had like I think sixty total in a in a Harbinger fleet, and Wait, why was, he why had was Alpha Star there because once again, PH and P Horde and all them uh, whatever cannot can't find their own fun, so they came over to our oh, side. To... They came over to mess with mess yeah. with you guys uh, while yeah. you guys were messing with Snuff. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like shocker. Fun. So interesting. Uh, I didn't know Alpha... this. Yeah. So Alpha Star was there. In Caracals, I had Harbingers. He had more than me and they were faster, but he couldn't really break, not very easily at least, in any of my ships. I think I lost like three Harbingers total. Uh, and then Dave Archer came in with a Jackdaw fleet. So, you know, the problem was I was in a prophecy, so I was like hella slow and I couldn't target lock as far as everyone could shoot. So I'm like, lock this. Uh, is it dying? Oh. 
So, so Don, you have a badly <laughs> fit FT ship. That's what you said. I had a ship because mm. no one, you know, Ragnar was oh, kind right. enough to deliver it to me, oh. but no one had a fit for it. No one had anything to like give. They were like, just use a monitor. So you didn't I'm like, well, talk I can't to anybody about this. Uh, no, there was the. Eventually, they posted the fit for the prophecy, but it still only target ranges out to like seventy, and the harbor so the hurricane hit up. This. I, well, you know, it would be nice if someone would talk to me about some of that stuff, huh? Maybe, maybe you should ask somebody about that. I, yeah, Dirk, I did, you, uh, but I didn't get an answer, Dirk. You Dirk one of your jobs is training FCs for the Imperium. Is there a reason uh, that you're trained on? That, that's it's not, not Dirk. That, that, that's not one of my jobs, just as a point. <laughs> um, I have it done it now. in the past. Um, it's one of those things where various different people pick it up at various different points you know a lot oh, yeah. of the ft interestingly enough greg a lot of the ft training in the imperium happens on the job right we we can we can do classes to tell you about fc 101 but by and large you want to be out there establishing relationships with fcs who have a ton of experience you want to be making sure that like these guys know who you are but also like you um you you want to be making friendships with these guys it's, and uh if you make a friendship with yeah. with those people you they'll always help you out coming up as a, a an fc in a in a large null block like starting out as like a noob and coming up through that 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 the uh, that null block and getting to FC must be an incredibly difficult position to put yourself in. Like I've I've seen countless people um, do so, things, and I mean I know you guys feel supported and all this shit, right? But at the end of the day, you have like a Mike Flood situation, and I lots of love to Mike Flood. We talk all the time in uh, Trash Talk Tuesday Discord and shit like that. I like Mike, but I mean you get a guy who's like you know new ish, and he has all this pressure on him, and he's up against these FCs that are like like way more experienced right and like even before the war you had like a mike flood versus uh asp oh, situation For sure. and i mean I, I find that to be an incredibly unfair position to put yourself in and that's i'm only saying that because i come from a place where you know i i started i've seen when i first started the game and when i say i've seen i don't mean like on a large scale by any means i was like gate camping and doing defense leads and shit right and I lost some yeah. stuff, and I, I learned stuff. But then I went to, like, low sec, and then I started FC on, like, a slightly larger scale, and then I got into medium-scale fights, and I started to, you know, and I did years of that, and and roams, it's... shit tons of roams. I've done probably thousands of fleets by, <laughs> by this point. I go to, I go to like, NC dot, right, and then I'm put into a larger a larger scale, and I'm able to like, incrementally get myself to a point where, like, you know, over the, the, the point of, like, where I started even where I am now, you know, I'm able to competently do things. I have experience, and I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? No, and I, then, I, and I, I see some dude who starts at zero <laughs> and and ends up at sixty like immediately, and I'm like, holy shit! That do must be. I, that uh, must you be think I, I do have to. I, I, no, no, Don, Don. I, I do have to say, hey. I, I, I really. Mean, everyone starts no, at zero. No, I, I really appreciate what Loki is saying here because that is my experience as an FC. That was that was where I was at. I started out FCing in a rental group in the drone lands back in like late 2014 early 2015 that was where i started fc'ing i started fc'ing kitchen sink rooms just like you know hey we've all got a friday night free let's go let's go see what we can do and uh i built from there and i built from there and i ended up moving from there into wormholes and in wormholes i learned to fc really blingy t3 stuff you know we're talking about Stratios fleets, things like that. And then I came to I, I came to Goonswarm, and I went from FCing like billionish Proteus fleets to hey, I've got to build myself back up with the Hurricanes and everything. I've got to prove myself to this new group. And it was a really interesting situation because absolutely, you've got to prove yourself in that group. But at the same time, that experience is going to really stand you in a really good stead to be able to do interesting things. Like, uh, there was a point at which Kendar, at the time, you know, we're talking about very early 2017, Kendar set me up with a fight against some guys in the QFC. 
and I took some caracals against the their hurricanes, and that was really what got me into into Kendar's radar. No experience is, is I, good. I, I won that fight, but really the experience that I'd had up until that point is what got me there. But it's kind of I, a good I'd been in various right? places, and oh, well, any experience as long I, as you yeah, have the right agree. attitude. I, I, you, you've got to have the red attitude. Blue. And that's nothing like I've seen anywhere else, right? When it's all uh, organized fights, it's not does not prepare you to FC but, when you move to another group. So it's got to be a good experience. You, you, you've got to... You, sure, it can't be like, hey, this is just a friendly fight that nobody's going to shit on you for. Exactly, yeah. That's it. You've, yeah. you've, you've got to feel bad about losing a fight before you can think, okay, what the fuck did I... What, what, what did I mess up? in the fight that I just lost. You've got to feel like it meant something. But at the I same agree, time, right. it, it doesn't have to be a big deal. Like, uh, a kitchen sink fleet that you lost can give you so many new pointers. Like, did you have people anchoring? Was the fact that it was kitchen sink an issue? Like, where where are you feeling like that? Loki, What what do you think about that? Like... Well, I definitely think like what you said, this starting at one place, working your way up, then moving and then needing to start almost at zero again and build yourself back up and then move to a different place. And then it really refines and sharpens your skills, I think, because you have a lot of prior experience, but you're basically in a position where everyone thinks you're an idiot because that's just how null blocks generally are in my experience anyway uh and nobody trusts you and you got to kind of like try to earn that trust but the the, the trust sorry my dog's barking earn the trust of of the membership the line members uh first and foremost and then also obviously of leadership and the other fcs in your group and all that shit but you get to a place where you're continuously you're refining you're starting uh, at a lower grade and then you're 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 working your way up and then you you do that repeatedly you get to a place where you've seen a lot and you've done a lot and then you're able to take that and really run with it when you get really big opportunities like at a coalition level hey we really need you to go save like all of our constellations and you're like uh okay right so uh i definitely what I find interesting I, is you seem to think that mike flood started out with little mike, experience mike, mike, mike has been shadowing asher for like two and a half years Done. Sure, Done. But Mike, Mike, Mike started off here. That that's no, the I mean, point. He's Mike, been Mike started too, off. But... We know. We like that. That's not the point. I'm Mike not trying to. I'm not trying to belittle the Imperium. I'm not trying to belittle Mike, anyone's anyone's shit, anyone's accomplishments or anything. Like Mike that. has I'm... grown a hell of a lot in his time in the Imperium. He's but... grown swimming in the deep end. Also, so he hasn't. He hasn't, had, uh, he hasn't been able to wave <laughs> people like the rest of the people. <laughs> He started off in the Imperium. That's his issue. And if you recall, what I said was, I didn't say like, I didn't say anything bad about him. What I said is, that's an incredibly difficult and a difficult position and and an unfair position, in my opinion, to put yourself in because, and, 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 you know, and obviously he's good with it, uh, whatever. But I'm just looking at that. If it were me starting, like, you know, only having run maybe a couple of hundred fleets, I got to watch Asher and I got to watch like these really good FCs, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm studying and I'm doing all this stuff. Like there's a big difference between doing that and then like needing to go in and like smashing skulls with like, like a, 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 200 man eagle fleet you know what i mean and all that lies in the balance is like the sovereignty of your alliance uh all of the social repercussions that happen if you lose and not only if you lose if you lose badly or if you lose because you didn't see something you may never get this opportunity again you know what I mean? uh, no, or it may, it may take another year before you work yourself out of the shithole the, to get another opportunity the, the well, alliance that i was in the alliance that i was in before i came to the imperium was a wormhole alliance that got evicted. I came to the Im- Imperium because we got evicted. I, I was FCing in that fight. Like, we-, we got knocked the fuck out by Hard Knocks and various other people. That, that shit happens, that experience. Yeah, you it's get very place. difficult to replicate when you've only been in a single place. And that's, that's the only thing that Mike hasn't done. He hasn't been in place to place. He's done fantastically well, and he's grown really well, and I will be the first person to say that I love Mike, and I love his fleets. But I, I also remember Mike as the guy who fell asleep on one of my Keepstar reinforcement fleets. So, like, 
he's from... grown a lot and i love him but i still he's he's, he's had a privileged <laughs> he's had a privileged still FT remember. experience it's... What I still I remember that way back quick, the... let me let me so Sorry. from knowing who mike is and how much i've talked with with him or just did fleets with him uh for doing stuff with asher as well as main fleet um his personality is the kind that has to do it the hard way or the he has to be thrown into the fire like he did get to do the small gang stuff because he shadowed asher a lot and got to learn some of the smaller things and, and do a lot of talking and studying but from knowing mike his personality 100 percent is just throw me in and i will figure it out like you tell me what to do i will learn i'll soak it in i mean he's only 17. he learns so. from his own mistakes which i have and, you, and he gets the job done too he you, he completes he his objectives you have I don't the, know if I don't know if going guy. the other way, a slower way, would have been as beneficial for him. It would have been maybe, but I well, mean, not, maybe not. Well, it depends what you mean, right? If you I, like for his, if you look at um, your F scene as a career, then probably not because he's you know in a really good spot in a very large, uh, you know, alliance coalition kind of thing right oh, we know his man. name we're talking about him right now the guy's yeah. probably just doing his homework or whatever right or we're talking about him here so he's obviously yeah, things not. things are things are going well but from like an actual like mechanics learning like experiencing like you also get calloused over time and that's what i wanted to mention too is like after you've done it enough times like you kind of know your shit to a degree where even if like you know if pgl whelps 250 mutants like he's like well that sucks let's go do something else and he's over it because you know he's He's aware that he's a good FC. He's aware that, you know, he he's accomplished things in the game. Uh, and like, well, one fleet doesn't mean anything. It's all good. Whereas like when you're just starting out, if you helped the 250 man unit fleet, you'd be like, what the fuck? And it would like, it would, it should, it should mean something and it should stop you a little bit. And yeah. you should, you should feel bad about that. And, the, and that, that's, and if you don't give a shit, then you're probably not going to be a good FC. So because I am not obviously a very good FC, but you don't give oh, a shit. Come come on. On. that's not what <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dawn's, no. Dawn's about to admit that she doesn't give a shit about the people she leads. Go, go on, <laughs> no. then. carry on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All of you. No. Um, so I you have figured out kind of what my role is. Like I, I know how to FC certain things, like saving people, I know how to do that handling work walls and what you need to do for them, I know how to do that. But for me, and a recommendation for um people who are scared of taking out their first fleet i just uh, someone i said ah oh, maybe i want fc i don't know because they kept on saying everyone needs to get into it, you know try it out and i was nervous to lead anything someone's like here and they gave me 200 thrashers and they're like and the fittings i think the guns at least and he's like fit them up take them out and just go so that was my first like six or seven fleets I've ever ran were handing out about 30 to 40 thrashers and then people bringing whatever they felt like. And I was like, all right, we're just going to go somewhere where there's some ratters and see if we run into anybody. And uh, my, I think my second fleet I ever took out, we killed a Kronos. And, oh, and then cool. we killed him. Then we killed him again the next day <laughs> in a Kronos. So, uh, but I, go ahead. When I I was gonna say when I started FCing, I was in Provi Block, and that was way Sorry. back when in like 20, what was it? it was twenty sixteen right. somewhere around there. Pravi but block back, uh, yeah, back, back, then, like. back then, back <laughs> then, back then in in Provi Block, they would FC things carefully right like there was always a scout the scout would always plus one the scout would always tell the fleet what's on the other side of the gate at all times and the fleet wouldn't even dare warp to the gate until after the scout had already plus one and that's how i learned i learned how to fc being very slow methodical thinking everything through before the engagement even started and then i i, I, I eventually probably you block you're talking about no. No, I, I remember Mifune and was This blocking. is exactly and then how I, it was. Uh, and then I, I, I went to Goons um, because I had heard wonderful stories about the Fountain War and all this all sec huge PvP stuff when I got into EVE. I was like, I want to be a part of that. Like That sounds like fucking amazing. Like 
sitting there for 19 hours straight during B Dash R. Like, that sounds fucking awesome to me. And you got to so do that. I, Only you were casting. <laughs> I got kidding. to do that, except I was casting and fell asleep. Um, but anyway, um, the when I moved in the Imperium, my first fleet in the Imperium was a Jackdaw fleet. And uh, I whelped because I was an idiot and took things very slowly. And I got yelled at by. Uh, the senior FCs for John Hartley. Oh, uh, twenty minutes. No, no, uh, that... this, was, this was this was before John Hartley. Like I say, I remember <laughs> Mifune coming in as an FC in the Imperium. Like, like it, yeah, Dirk, Dirk, Dirk was in daycare when I was I, when I started. I, I, I yelled at Mifune for his first major <laughs> loss. Like that—that that was how that shit went. <laughs> and uh, it's so, like my thing. My thing as an FC is I always end up taking a break from the game, right? Like uh, when I when I left Goons originally um, for reasons, uh, I left Goons and I took like a year long break from the game. And I, I come back and I went into Lawn, and and with Lawn we were flying Ravens and stuff, and it was like a complete change up to what I was used to flying. Flying, and I welded some stuff over there, and then you know I took like a three-month break after that, and when I came back, it's like, okay, cool. Hack doctrines are absolutely everything now, and I'm like, what are hacks? <laughs> and it was just like, it, it's different for everybody. Um, and the fun thing is, like, you just you learn, right? And the one of the things that I've learned in not just EVE, but in every game I've ever played in my life, you always go against the bigger guy. Because then you learn from it, right? Like I used to play uh, before I played Eve. I was a semi-pro player in CS:GO. I played in ESEA tournaments back then. Before you even thought about going to some to one of those tournaments, you would sit there for hours watching the pro games or playing against people that were a higher rank than you, and you just learn from them. You would die a million times, and you'd be pissed that you died a million times, but you learned because you're like. Hey, what the hell did he do to me? Oh, okay, so I can do that next time, and then you learn from it. And it's just, mm -hmm. I think, I think what you say is right. Just throwing yourself into the fire pit is a wonderful way to learn things if you are so, good at self reflection. So I do want to shift gears because while this entire line of of talk has been fantastic, uh, it originally started with before it was rudely interrupted. It was going to ask Dominark about the Satio kills they got today. And I want to make sure that we have time to talk about that since they were circle jerking so fucking hard this weekend about their Satio kills. So Dominark, were you on this Satio? I did, did not you... make it to the Satio. I was, it was in comms, but I wasn't there physically. So it's a small Satio. It was only, it was 374 billion. Yes. No, 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 no. That's right. just one of them. That's just one of them. No, 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 Dirk. No, this is no, not no, your thing. No, Dominic no, no, Dawn. I, I have to interrupt him because he's incorrect when he said it was a small satio. In fact, it's called sarcasm. Yeah, I, I know it was sarcasm, but I know that also some people in our, <laughs> you know, viewership are American and they don't appreciate sarcasm. Three. So, Americans sorry. don't appreciate what, sarcasm. What, what number was that, <laughs> Dominic? One uh, number? The, the one CTO, 374 billion isk. It was only the second most expensive upwell structure ever destroyed. Most expensive oh. CTO, second most expensive structure, yeah. Do you, uh, Dominic, do you have the story behind it? Because I've read up a little bit on like it, but what's the story with this structure? Well, we hit it many, many times. They were trying to get it, and they, they would defend it. And finally, I guess they just didn't have the, the ass to do it. I mean, this just comes off yesterday. We uh, we've got them down to one jump bridge in Esoteria. It's all that's left is one. We destroyed the the jump bridge in their staging system yesterday. They put another one up, so we reinforced it again today. And this is in DTAC B, so it's their staging system. So it's um, and then finally we're, we're just we're gaining momentum. Stain Rust is helping us a lot, taking pressure off the other, uh, other side of things. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and we're really getting good numbers showing up, um, which is something Bastion has struggled with in the past, you know, getting good numbers for our own fleets. And Keisha and Karnaos and, and, and the guys have done a great job of getting people excited and, and, and showing up for these for these fleets. And So it's, it's a good thing. And then we're also a lot less skittish about what we'll take out. 
Um, that's been part of a problem in the past too. We've always been kind of, well, we don't want to lose you know something too much. But now we're saying, you know what? We're not going to take things if we don't go out, go for it. So like the shacks is what we've been taking these structures out with, and it's been very effective. And there was yeah, a that, second Sotio that you guys correct. killed as well. Um, that was only, I think, a couple billion, 74 or 90 billion, somewhere in there. 84. 84 billion. 84. Yeah. yeah then, um, so that one got a definitely didn't have anything yeah. in it. From the Is that what a Sotio believe... cost is 84? I wasn't sure if that was just the, about the cost of one. Yeah. Uh, fitted and everything, I think. If you don't have the T2 rig in it, yeah. Um, no. Oh, it cost just the, 30 bill plus, you know, extra modules and yeah, okay. everything I wasn't else. sure what the cost of one was. I didn't uh, a, a big part of the 370 bill. So CTO on Reddit, because, rig. because Pappy <laughs> likes to do this. I, well, I, yeah. don't, I don't go to well, Reddit, so I don't know what they said there. Right. So I'll let you know. So on Reddit, Pappy are saying, oh, that Sotillo was marked for dead weeks ago we haven't cared about it um, in weeks yet they put that, a core in it yeah that core, was actually, it was core and it was been defended many times yeah, they're full of shit no that was actually a thing from villy in tis as far as i understand villy exactly, had suggested that that, that, that structure oh, that's... was now, maybe uh, you were talking about the 84 billion one in. maybe I mean, no, he, no, no, no. They, 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 oh, yeah. they were very specific. I know. Like the, this, this came out. Then, like, let's not give them any opportunities to get out here, Dominark. Like, this was Villy saying that the very expensive CTO was effectively dead for multiple months at this point, and that was just how they wanted to view it. And if that's dropped. how they want to view it, then fair and enough. That's just that's so. just asinine thing to say. I mean, th what that do you system want to say? had been def had been dead for a while. We'd taken everything else, but that's a tail in that system a while uh, several months ago. He's he's correct about that. It's been but several months they of, them it. of them defending this thing. If this is the if only thing we could If you're not going to use it, yeah. Why would you core it? Well, right. Exactly. Like I said, they've defended are you dumb? This thing a number of times. They've, they've driven us off this fucking Satio. I, I can't I, I can't tell you how many number of times. It's a, a, tons. To say, for them to say that they weren't defending it is an absolute lie. Well, Loot Fairy said yes. <laughs> we got it, finally. <laughs> if, you it look at, lack of effort, bill. Like if you look at the numbers of the stuff yeah. dropped, we did the math, it's at least two titans worth of stuff. It's, um, it, was uh, no, no, right, okay, Don, you did the math. It sounds like you did the math in a very meaningless way. It's two ME0 avatars plus... An ME eight rears worth of graviton capacitors or graviton whatever the fuck the graviton things are, plus a bunch of drone bays, plus a bunch of cargo holds, and so it suggests that whoever was building in the Sitio had a no BPCs that were ME positive BPCs for the Titans. But also that they were just trying to build whatever the fuck they could, including up to potentially eight faxes. Like, the, the numbers are really awkward on this video, but absolutely two ME0 avatars and the specific requirements for a rear in the, the Graviton capacitor, whatever the fucks, which are only used for Aurea, by the way, which means that we know that they were trying to build an ME8 Rhea. Interesting stuff. Aren't they attacking? I need to learn more about industry, dude. I really do. I've just been the PvP. Sorry, right. I would have never so seen this. Like... I don't know shit about industry. I, uh, I know I started, I started a corp, and now I'm just like, well, guys, it's time I... to start learning about how to make money. I swear, I, I swear to God, that was uh, myself and uh, two other individuals from the INN staff. That was like, uh, in between other things, that was two hours worth of work in between other discussions uh, where we were trying to figure out numbers for various things. Uh, this, this is just how we do sometimes. Come at us, this is how we do. Just just like gets out his spreadsheets. He's like, let's go, dude. 
guys Le- like legit. high five. I, and I guys like both pictures. look at each other. You have that like, little little glimmer in your glimmer eyes. In You're like, eyes, yes. <laughs> XL, it, fucking open that motherfucker up. Let's go. It was my <laughs> fucking capital spreadsheet for sure. Like, <laughs> I got out go. of my capital <laughs> spreadsheet. Fuck you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! It's I need awesome, to get a capital man. spreadsheet. No, no, it's it's good because this is the thing. Like I've been uh, speaking <laughs> speaking of spreadsheets and and numbers. One of the things on Reddit, which I know is a, a Eve Reddit thing, but I wanted to point out, Dirk, did you see the pie chart on Reddit? I love the pie chart on Reddit. Did you make it? I would love to see this. Uh, not not the not not chart. not the pie chart of shame, but the other pie chart. Uh, the, the the pie pie chart yeah. the actual pie You're not, the, not that, helping at all <laughs> so apparently so apparently okay, a, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna need uh, a link pat- i'm gonna need a link before you go actually all yeah yeah go link. ahead go ahead get 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 the links i'll talk about it while you get the links where, 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 where are was... my links why are you guys link. suggesting that you don't have links for the things that you're asking me about I don't, come on i don't have links uh, uh there we go someone put it in there um, so apparently what uh, the, the Pappy Line members are claiming is that uh, a Goose Worm is apparently filling uh, our alliance with alts and alpha accounts, etc. And how we're just creating alts to make it look like we're fine and whatnot. This is the and all, this, this, this is out all the these fake facts. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, so what, you, like, you, you know what the free... best thing about no, no, really, Mifune. Before you carry on, and give this more legitimacy than it's worth. You know what the best thing about this meme is? Pie chart. Uh, two days ago, there was one of these posts from somebody else talking about how uh, Legacy are doing exactly the same thing. And three months ago, there was another post talking about how Legacy are doing exactly the same thing. Like, this is just a, a copy of a copy of a meme. I feel like and, we have the same conversation every giant, like, hell war, though. Yeah, for sure. But it, it's a copy well, of yeah. a copy of a meme, yeah. and whoever posted it should feel bad, because, well, they just they just copied another meme. Like... Have some originality, for the, God's sake. The best chart, the best part is how everyone was complaining about how he did a pie chart instead of a bar graph or something, or an Excel spreadsheet. He did a fucking pie chart. Pie chart Nobody likes pie. Chart. I, I don't I get the do. obsession with the pie chart. I want pie. Pie charts uh, are your dumb, favorite though. kind of pie, Dirk. Who doesn't like pie? No, they're not. They're very well, good for visuals. Fine, it's a pizza so... chart. It's a pizza chart. Whatever. No, no, no. Yeah. See, you all seem to a tart suggest chart. A tart chart. No, a tart chart. A tart chart. Give me, a, <laughs> give me a steak and ale pie. We, and I'll we, de- we determined that a cheesecake is a tart. A cheesecake. Wait a second, Dirk. What the fuck did you just say? A steak and eel pie? Steak and ale pie. Ale. Ste- ale. Yeah. Oh, they're English. They eat eels too. No, 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 no. So like a beer, beer and ale are very different things. It's it, 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 it's you, you have made lager, you have ale, made up you have various different beers. You tell him, cat. It's, it's it's a type. It's a type of beer. I will sick my cat on beer. you. You're you're all terrible, but equally the worst part about you is that you don't understand a real pint. So that's fine. Dirk, do you want a pith helmet? Ah. Do you own a pith helmet? I, I, every time you speak, I picture you in a pith helmet. Pith helmet. You know, the, 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 Brit, uh, the Brits would put on their heads in the Boer War. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, oh, oh, did so, somebody call me? Well, while Dirk is looking at... Well, Dirk is looking at his new headwear to get. I, I, um, I don't need Loki. to Google a pith helmet. Uh, I've not had to explain w- what that particular... Thing is, and I'm aware enough of my own imperialistic history. Thank you. Okay. So, Loki, uh, how is Ketch and them going? I saw there was a fight today uh, over the fort in EX6. Were you guys there at all? I, didn't pay attention to that part. I have actually no idea because I, I was at work today. Been at work, yeah. Um, but probably not. Like, we haven't really done much at all in Ketch except 
for one for Take over night. half the region. Well, I mean, okay, look at it. So there are some <laughs> systems that are close to Pravi that I, we feel should probably belong to Pravi, and so now they, they do for now. That's uh, that's that's the thing. But uh, I don't know. Like I, we took them because it was funny. I think mostly. Like I don't think anyone really wants more soft. Uh, well, I'm true. If, if I, guys think legacy I don't think. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In, in RC, I don't think RC like Wrecking Group, uh, which is the uh, the coalition that isn't a coalition that Jet Bomb is a part of. Um, I don't think they need any more soft. I don't think they're looking for more soft particularly. Like. They, you know, the whole Pravi block situation kind of happened, and now they're like, well, we got sub. And now it's like, we're just hey. in a, you know, we we want content. Like, there, it's not a, it's not a <laughs> thing where we, like, only... we're craving, like, more land. Like, we don't need Lo any more land. Loki, you only own a third of catch already. What more would you want? Uh, to own less of catch. That's what I would want, personally. If you're speaking to me, I would want to own less of it, personally. Um, but anyway, I mean, that's a thing. So outside of that, there was uh, one pretty good fight where Brave showed up in Minutes and we had... Uh, yeah, where is this fan tankers. noise coming from? I hear it on the stream. Is that from... Nobody's mic is keying up. It's almost certainly uh, Eric, because it's his new PC and he hasn't got it dialed in yet. What? Hmm? Hmm? Somebody call me? If you listen to the stream, you Your can Your fans are too loud. A lot of fans hey, I blame Soth for that. He said go with air-cooled rather than water-cooled. I'm just saying. Dialed them in yet? Dialed them in? Totally I don't know. No. Well, can you, are you able to put that sound to push to talk or something? Or I don't know. Don't, don't ask Eric I'll mute a little. to understand how push to talk Oh, don't ask. That's his yeah. show. Hold on, what? That's hmm? not his choice. Well, you have the other challenge, too. It's, you know, push to talk to you guys. But since I'm hosting, it pulls directly from my main, uh, my main mic right into the feed. be a setting within the X -Blit. Should be. Should be a setting with X that you can. It is. It is a setting within X Split that you can put your mic to push to talk to the stream. Also, Eric, apparently I need to be reduced just a little. You sound great to me. I don't care what those people say. They're only the audience. I'm, I'm Nobody cares. Oh, so, all right. Well, I just yeah, I'll dial you down, down a little I bit. I wasn't sure, and I, I listened. I'm like, oh, I, I understand what they're talking about. Because I'm checking, none of us are keying up. So it's, I was like, it's got to be somewhere because it's none of us <laughs> talking, other than occasionally when I cough, because I'm, I'm battling being sick. You sound a little soft now. What does the audience think there? No. <laughs> very terrible human being. Yeah. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. So yeah, anyway, I'll turn you up a little Loki, more. What is? Um, uh, do you I'm have any idea what? Now, so there we go. <laughs> do you have any idea what Dread Bombs next steps are? are? You guys still working on Faith Abolis, or are you just wanting to find fights, and you're just hoping until people die off, or what is your guys' motivation right now? Uh, just to get content, basically, we're we're not in Faithapolis. We were just screwing around in Immensia and Scalding Pass. Like that's we've been fighting fire this whole time. This wasn't like this was there was no like how do you say this collusion or whatever the fuck it is that the shows want to make it sound like it is. We were in Great Wildlands like fighting fire because it seemed like a good idea. It seemed like a good way to get content, and we're still over there and we're still fighting fire, and that's what we've been doing this entire time. And I cannot be, be more clear about that. We did fight Brave a couple of times. I tackled a Rourke in, in uh, like, oh shit or something like that, one of those systems. Uh, you know, so we were in CAJ, but, like, as far as I'm aware, like, we have not really made any any kind of any kind of push and catch other than the low hanging fruit saw that existed. Uh, that was predominantly, by the way, for. Uh, from the watchmen the watchmen were like a small well they weren't small they had like two thousand dudes but they were not very pvp oriented and uh they were kind of screwing around with us we were screwing around with them and then we ended up kind of accidentally collapsing their alliance um oops and Oopsie. so yeah so we did that and uh you know so the, the sob that we hold and catch is primarily i believe from them although i have absolutely no fucking idea because i haven't looked at dotline in a very long time so please do not take my uh my word for it but yeah i 
we haven't really done much in catch at all. It's mostly just been uh, fucking around with fire and trying to get good fights. And it'll probably continue to be fucking around with some dudes and trying to get good fights. Now, how do you Loki. feel about the accusations of that you guys are being mean by picking on uh, Legacy? Okay, so what I'm supposed to say is I want to uphold my moral integrity. We are the good guys, and what we're doing is... I, <laughs> so, sorry, I, like, fucking, moral I integrity? fucking hate... Yeah, that's... <laughs> Wait. Look, look it. Like, this is this is Villy's shtick, okay? It's the test shtick. It's the pappy shtick uh, to a degree. It's also to a degree... Menz's shtick where he's like no we're you know we're the honorable people and we're fighting this war and we're outnumbered and all this shit. like i don't give a fuck okay yeah we are the bad guys we're coming to take things and honestly as far as i'm concerned yeah, in order for children. my in order for my corp to grow someone else's corp has to shrink right in order for me to make more isk or for me to take more sov or to i don't know just become bigger and better in the game someone else is gonna have to suffer and i'm the guy who's telling you that's okay i don't give a fuck that's exactly like, if that's what it takes and that's what we're gonna do and i don't think that seto minds being the bad guy either to be honest so uh, speaking being speaking the bad of in his life speaking of uh being outnumbered uh, does anyone have the battle report from the 1dq constellation the other day, but so, someone wanted like day. I can't. You, you, I you can't link it on my laptop. Day, Wait, um, why, why did why did you put the other day in parentheses for? What I don't. I don't know. But we I, don't ever I, understand I, what um, Rooney does. It, I never. Okay. Anyway. Um, never, the, never make any sense. But if someone has the battle report and wants to shove it in chat, that'd be great because my laptop can't do shit. Um, but the funny thing is, is Pappy only outnumbered Goonswarm by a uh, hundred dudes, I think, at most. And uh, in it, outformed Brave for that fight, which I thought was pretty damn cool. In it, outformed or Brave pretty regularly. Brave is collapsing hey. like a melon. You, 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 you're not doing very well here, Mifune. No, but... I, but, I don't but what I mean. People so he's playing. talking about... we had a For those of you that don't know, we had a huge fight yesterday in the 1DQ1 Constellation. Pappy decided to like make a push to try and start breaking down the Sov in the one pocket that we have. Like, for sure. Oh, Mike's here. Oh okay. dear, we have a Mike flood. Mike, how are you feeling? He can't tonight? hear you. He's uh, yeah. he's there. He is. Okay, so um, Mike, so Mike, we had a huge feeling, fight. Sorry. I'm feeling fine. What, why why are you ask him? Oh, yeah, we were I'm talking just... about you for like 15 uh, minutes. Uh, uh, really. You're just, a main topic honestly, of conversation. So I was so hey, lucky. Let, let's let's hey, circle back to that real quick and Dawn, hold on to the topic, please. Dawn, you are but, killing me uh, here. I I, I love. To kill you, I live to kill you, and uh, you love me killing you. Um, Mike, so we, earlier on we were talking about experiences as people start to FC, and how they, they really learn. Um, Loki and I basically learned by going from one group to another to another, and kind of starting from the bottom with previous experience. Uh, how, how did you feel learning to FC? So I came into Karma Fleet when I joined with absolutely zero experience of seeing. I literally had not one. I had FC'd one fleet of like five dudes and was told I was shit tier and I would never be able to FC again in that corp. The corp kicked me two, late later, two weeks later because they're a bunch of fuckwads and I still fucking hunt them in low sec. Sorry, I hunt them in um, high sec occasionally, but I digress. Okay, so wonderful. Good. Good. That's, that's I, a grudge match for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was gonna get into it, Dirk, but, like, as far as, like, learning and shit like that, um, just from your mistakes, I, the time, going on a structure bash and shooting shit, I didn't really learn from that. What I learned from was, you know, those mistakes where you, you make a mistake and you fuck up, and you're like, oh, shit, I just fucked that up. Like, one of the big eye-openers for me, and even though I, I, you know, at the beginning of the war, I was fighting NSH all the fucking time. And I fed into NSH Nighthawks hard. I was so fucking pissed. And by the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Because I learned, you learn from losing, at least in my experience. Um, you know, I learned more from fucking up and losing than I ever did from winning. You don't win, learn from winning because oh, you don't take away guest? something to improve. Okay, so, uh, so. F f 
that's uh uh, I think Loki and I would both agree, and Loki, I'll give you a chance to weigh in on this in a second. Like that—that's very much just how F seeing goes. But second question, Mike, uh, what did you learn from falling asleep in a keep star bashing fleet? Uh that to not stay up for so to not wake up, go on a Plex live fleet, and then go to, and then go on a fucking keep star bash with twenty one hours of without with being awake for twenty one hours with no caffeine because you ran out at your house. Well, my house. <laughs> that that's what I learned is 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 make sure you have a su- sufficient supply of caffeine when you're FCing. That's a very fair point. Um, Loki, well, what do you think about what Mike had to say there? No, oh, the only thing I. I don't disagree, but the only thing I kind of disagree with is the not not learning by winning thing. And I think that I think people underestimate the value in winning. And I think that it depends to which degree you actually are winning. So you know, like if you did, if, no one's ever going to be perfect, right? So whatever victory you get is always going to be riddled with mistakes to some degree in everything in life, right? Like that's just how it is, uh, and it's a process, right? And I think that if you learn to love that process. It gets a little bit less painful, but you know, I was, I was, I wasn't that young. I wasn't as young as Mike when I started F saying. Um, but I definitely, I definitely think that like losing really hurt and then winning. I could never win big enough to get over the losses, if that makes any sense. And I think that that's actually a pretty. I mean, it's probably not actually a healthy attitude to have, uh, if we're being honest. But I think that's a really good way to get better at stuff because. It didn't matter how much I won. There was always something I needed to improve on. And I always just tore my fleet apart, went over it in my mind, or if I had video or whatever, went over it and dissected it. And and I learned things, you know what I mean? You, and it's like, well, why did that? Well, why did that work? Okay, fuck. Well, let's, you know, let's go. Because like, I don't know, you, you know, everyone's anchored on me. We start primarying targets and all of a sudden we're like randomly breaking logic. I've won fights they should never have won. Like ever have won. Ever. Everyone's Everyone. had fights like that, man. Yeah, like, absolutely outnumbered. So why did that work? Okay, well let's break yeah. it down. And like that, and these are the, sh- the these are the things that I would do, right? So I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't completely write off winning as being a non learning thing. I think that there is more of a earnest um, necessity to learn from your mistakes because you know, oh, I just whelped 250 dudes. Uh, that can never happen again. Holy fuck. Okay, I got to learn from this, right? Versus you know. On the winning side, you can kind of take your time. If you're self-reflective, I think that you can you can definitely yeah. turn into a learning experience. We have actually another guest that's joined us today. I didn't think this would ever happen. Um, we have Asher Elias is here today uh, to say hi, I guess. So Asher! Hi. Hello. Hi. So we're, we're actually, I, today's, I was hoping to go over a bunch of news today, but apparently it's FC talk today, so. Uh, we're, coming, <laughs> all... we're coming for you, Pando. Everybody, right, so. I could. I, you guys invited me. I could have stayed off the show. No, I I definitely am more oh. than happy to have you come in and hang out. I was more than happy to talk about whatever anybody wanted to talk about. But we had a lot of news happen this week. We had some new uh, stuff. A, a dev blog dropped today, so hopefully we can get to that at some point. But um, how's your week been, this uh, Asher? Uh, you know, we're doing pretty fine. We uh, we had a big fight over. Um, they attacked like one DQ I hub, so I like the constellation uh, of one DQ essentially, and we had a big fight over that the other day. We won that one pretty handily, so that was nice. Um, it's been going pretty well other than that. There was there was a big deal on Reddit about that, Asha. Like the, the, it, no, no, we've got to bring it up. Like uh, even CCB Convict talked about the. the oh GM my god, I don't want to talk about like, that. What what's your perspective on that? I, I don't want to deal, delve into the details, but what's your perspective there, Ash? I just everyone's had the, the server work against them or for them before, and it's annoying, and it's it's you, you want to complain about it a lot, but uh, that I don't know that one was uh that, that one seemed like one of the few to complain, and then like the other. I don't know if it was in that message or another one, but like Progod was like, oh, we were only, we were merely seconds from succeeding. Which implies that they like had a hack that almost went through, but there wasn't anything like that. They weren't more than a couple minutes into any hack, like the entire thing. So I don't know, I don't know what that claim was, but it's just sort of very, well, whatever. It's 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 it's, it's weird. Um, from and, my understanding, and... it was they were seven seconds away from get, starting the hack to get into overtime, 
and because they were pushed off, they didn't get to. They weren't even time. close to that. Well, that, even if, that's, even that's, that's true. If that's what they're saying. That's not seven seconds from succeeding. It's seven seconds from then losing your hacker. <laughs> like if it does spin up, like I don't, I don't whatever. <laughs> that's like one of those unverifiable things, though, right? Like when things just don't work out for whatever reason, like for this reason particularly, it's like, it's not like anyone's going to verify that. Just like, dude, we were so fucking close. Like, you know, you can rally your, your guys a little bit. And it's like, if it wasn't for CCP, we would have won that guys. All right. So show up for the next fleet. I mean, that's probably yeah. what it is, but I mean, like, you know, whatever. And the whole, like, like the, the servers in one to hue were pretty bad. And like the whole, like, Oh, it, it's guaranteed that, that T five Z was mapped to the same note as these things. Like, they, they, he has no idea. And then there's the I I, I saw the controversy today where where there was a contract saying that that CCP does sometimes sh- share, you know that that the stuff has been, um, you know, uh, reinforced. And, and, and then everyone from Happy was like, "Well, see, it proves the T5ZI." Well, I shouldn't say everyone, but some people were saying, you know, it proves the T5ZI was on the wrong node. It's like, no, it doesn't. That's not what the dude said at all. So oh, it's because- just stupid propaganda. Because the th- the fun, and this is something I wanted to bring up on the topic when we were talking about what we were going to do this week, but the whole thing is like, yeah, you can go and ask pretty much any CCP dev, hey, is this node reinforced? And they're going to say, yeah, we reinforced the node, but they're not going to go straight up and tell you exactly which systems are on which nodes. That That's the kind of information they keep, you know, behind closed doors. You know, and, they, and I think uh, even today they announced that the staging systems for each side is reinforced pretty much all the time according to some CCP people so it's like okay cool yeah, your whole logic that. like your whole logic is that 8WA and T5Z were supposed to be on the same node not really because T5Z was already on its own node so like your PGL, your logic here is absolutely flawed. And like I, 90% of the Pappy line members are like, oh, oh my God, 1DQ had 15% tie-dye and T5Z had 10%. So that must mean CCP want goons to win the war and this and that. And it's just like, it's, it's, the fuck is this coming from? It's almost, <laughs> like, it's almost like 1DQ is always on its own note all the time. So well, doesn't so it kind of have to be like it does like, yeah when, when you be. have that so when you have that much like trade bandwidth and people bandwidth in it if you it having to be on a reinforced node is kind of a necessity and i feel like t5 is kind of the same way where like you see the amount of transactions being made that i wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't if it t5 was is always on it t5 is always on, oh. a, on a reinforced node like, i don't yeah, like, it, really it, it, I was one to you I mean, like, my computer wants to kill itself anytime I, I warp through that system. Like, just going to say. You guys have structures up. Like, there's all kinds of shit happening there, dude. It's uh, it's pretty intense. But, I mean, like, so we push technology, or at least this technology, to the, you know, to the breaking points, right? And then when it breaks, we, we complain and we hit and we ha and we have to beat our chests and get the war drums going and, 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 and posture so that we don't look like pussies and get our guys riled up and all this shit. But, like, like realistically, like, you know. If we're, I'm, doing things, if we're going like ham on this shit. Like things will work a lot better. I'm not going to say that like like Villy's wrong or right. I don't know if that's actually Villy, but it, either way, um, is, that's Villy's. Okay. okay. Well, I, I had a character in AWA and a character in T5ZI, and I looked at the the tie dye once because it wasn't really a, it wasn't really a thing, but I did happen to look at it like a tab from one to the other, and they weren't on the same tie dye. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. I think I think it's just as likely that they were on. Um, on separate nodes, like and then both were under a lot of load, so they they were at ten percent or whatever. I could be wrong. You know, maybe 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 they were. Maybe they were both on the same node, and yeah, that sucks. Um, there there there. CCP only only has so many uh, reinforced nodes to put people uh, put things on. So, you know, if that's the case, it sucks. It's it's a uh, like. I don't. I don't know what the excuse though is though. Like if, if one here's at ten percent tie dye, T five is at ten percent tie dye, and AWA is at ten percent tie dye. Everyone's at the same like level, right? Like there's no like. It's not like you know when he was running at a hundred percent, and you know, and everyone else wasn't. And that's happened before in this war on the other side where T five ZI has been not chugging, and Wendy has, and like it sucks. Like yeah, it sucks. Just that, that's that's Eve online. They needed to do is change that... the node in period basis because, dear God, every time we shove a hundred people through, it, it goes to 10% tie dye. It's awful. I feel like, and 
and I know Villy's in chat, so Villy, I'm not targeting you or, or PGL directly, but the line members of Pappy, I don't know what it is, but they get so riled up when this kind of thing happens, right? Like, uh, like I, we, we said, we talked about this when the second battle of M2 happened and the server broke, but like when uh, Operation Enho didn't work, you know, we were like, okay, yeah, it really sucks that it didn't work, but it is what it is. Um, and then it's like, okay, the servers are under heavy load, things are starting to break, and Pappy Line members are like, oh my god, it's not 100% perfect, a genuine middle finger to CCP, bro, they suck, and it's just like, it's, dude. It's not, it's, we, here's, here's the thing, Muffin, it's not all, like, Pappy's Line members, and it's just like, it's, you have the certain... It's a lot of them, though. You see the Reddit. loudest people, like, yeah, like... It's, yeah. Like, uh, have you, ever, Mifune, have you ever said something dumb on a stream? And do you think that should represent all the Imperium if you say something dumb? Yeah. Uh, I, also, I also, Anho wasn't, uh, wasn't <laughs> a server, a server, it wasn't a server issue, it was a bug. Like, it wasn't Tida that caused Anho to fail. It was a bug. Like, it was a game yeah, code right. issue. There's, uh, so, um, but it's all the same, you know, it's all basically the same. Like, you have the same problem. A, a big, a big thing, too, I think, is like line members on either side of this are, I don't want to use the word radicalized, but it kind of applies, like, almost radicalized against one another, like, if that makes any sense. Like, it doesn't, you don't even need the leaders, like, to generate any kind of spin at this point. It's like people are just resting on everyone's words and, and pointing the finger and, oh, my God, what, see what he just said? That's not true. That's not true. And then, like, they get their friends and they go on Reddit and it's getting kind of crazy, to be honest. I mean, this has kind of always existed in EVE Online. I call EVE Online like a tribalism machine because that's literally what it is. Well, that's I, the best way to survive is tribalism. But now, to, but what I find funny mm. is that either side of this conflict, which, by the way, I'm not a part of. I'm an objective third party watching this. I just like to yeah, state there's that. No for the, there's yeah. no such thing as objective, objectivity. For the Car record. Carry on. <laughs> for the record. Uh, is You know, I see... I see you know, you guys kind of doing the same stuff like a little bit, and then calling each other out for it. it I, I know you don't you don't have to agree with that, but I mean it's true though, right? And um, I mean, as long as we all acknowledge that, then I mean, I guess it's great. But you guys have seen I, that like I, comic I, where it's like our our glorious leader, their despotic ruler, yeah, you know, yeah, our, yeah, our, our yeah, lovely religion. I, I and, we've yeah. all seen that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I, I want to throw out Eric, really quick, Loki. Uh, a, a, uh, uh, an argument that is basically that we all haven't been in the same space in the past year or so at this point. Like, none of us have had the opportunity to take a break, take that real life kind of detente and uh, turn around and just be in the same space and have a couple of drinks with each other anymore. Yeah. And I think that might be a, a a significant part of why we're all still so dedicated to this one conflict. We're all dedicated to this one cultural clash. Because none of us have been in the same place to have a drink, just chill out and uh, like talk to each other anymore. What what do you guys think about that? Do you think that the lack right. of real life meets uh, are affecting our community at this point? This should it's not this is not a kumbaya simulator, right? I'm not like like uh, the ideal scenario would be to go live in the drone lands where you're basically unassailable, right? And then have no one ever attack you, and then you could build up a peaceful economy and see what your scientists could invent, right? Like this is not I... this is not a real life <laughs> simulator, right? Like uh, okay. it, it's, it's I, a I say simulator. Real quick, Asha, I, I wasn't saying this was a kumbaya simulator. I was trying to suggest that the fact that we've been going at this Person for meets. eight months, yeah, it, th th this is getting towards unprecedented i mean and that le le legacy can't point. give up right that's the thing is that they're fully incentivized to keep uh to keep panfam in it as long as they can uh so panfam like they're gonna go well i'm gonna stay in this as long as the, the alternative is better like if i go home what do i do is, is there something i need to do at home but legacy as it stands now if panfam went home today is there anyone here goon or legacy who thinks that they would live for more than a month or two like, no, no one does. No one's sane. I mean, there's going to be your Seraph X Basarab, or however you say his name, and I'm sure that uh, 
I'm sure that like the like the Kool Aid drinkers on Reddit would say that, but like the people who like are not like infected with that kind of like mindset um, on either side would be like would say no. And so, so for legacy, there is no peace because they can't have it because they will be destroyed. Right. Like, like in, 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 um, so for pan fam is the only one who's sort of like a, uh, a wild card here. Cause goons have to fight cause it's our home, right? We don't have somewhere else to go. Um, and, and so, you know, our boats are burnt. Legacy's boats are burnt. So the only one who could choose to do something else is pan fam. That's true, but like I was there during the the glassing of tribute, as we call it, um, and I think that that was an interesting experience, and I think that that might be in the minds of people in PanFam while we're or there doing this kind of you know uh, supporting. Well, I mean, you wasn't know, trying trying to burn the goons down. To be honest, uh, I mean, like, I'm not I'm going to say they have no motivation. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that they're the only ones who aren't in like like legacy and and imperium our 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 wrists are tied together and each one's holding a knife right like sure. you can't you can't give up pan fam is not in that situation i'm not saying they don't have any grievances that they want settled i'm just saying that they're the ones who have a reason to go away sure sure that i guess that makes sense yeah at the same time though like there's vested interest in maybe sticking this up because like you guys kind of like invade regions and just like fuck everything like that's what you guys have been doing for the last you're talking, couple you're of years about, you're talking about blocks and eve i agree uh well yeah and then to be, to be more frank like goon swarm and then the imperium in general like well i mean like goons do it like less than pan fam right less than legacy if you look at the actual know. yeah yeah and we're the ones who and, don't and, put and... renters in i mean let's put it this way of all the blocks in, in eve goons are the only ones who like in the morals of eve are good ones Right? I, I I wouldn't put it that way. Oh, I really, you guys are the good I, guys. I, I really I really wouldn't put it that <laughs> way. But I thought so, this wasn't so, a kumbaya so, simulator, dude. It's not. So, we're just, we're just, <laughs> there we go. Asher and I are disagreeing. We're just, disagreeing. We're just the good bad guys. What what I would suggest is that like over the past four years since goons have been in Dell, like we we've we we've been aggressive in various regions. But once we're done with the region, I mean, hell, take the glassing of tribute. Like, once we were done with the region, what did we do with it? We didn't install renters. We didn't install infrastructure. We went, hey, like, we'll we'll leave it fucking barren. We'll leave it fallow. And whoever wants to come into the region, settle there, do whatever the fuck they want. They can do it in tribute. They can do it in Vale. They can do it in wherever the hell they want. Fade for fuck's sake like this is my opinion because it's a video game so these these guys can do what they want that there's no morality to it that nothing matters at all it's all pixels you can say that but in in, at least in my like my take is the two great moral failings of leadership in in this game are renting and botting right and if you support either of those in, in my mind it makes you a bad person that's how i define my opposition and the the goons are the only alliance who haven't done that we have had renters before and we and I like I never didn't remember it then, and I think we kind of did it half heartedly because we were sort of forced to. But um, if you if you like support a giant rental empire and a giant body empire, which is what Pantheon and Legacy do, then you're on in my side the bad side of Eve. So like that's how I define my opposition to the sides in this game. Fair like enough. and and a lot of them don't give a shit about that. Like they don't care. Like like they they don't care about renting at all. Like they, they're laughing at that idea, and they pretend that they don't support botting, and they do, but they pretend they don't. So are you are you basically just saying like basically all renters bought or something? Is that the or yeah, yeah it's breeds botting? Yeah, you can't. They're inextricably tied together. You can't rent, have renters okay. and botters. And not only that, I think it's bad for the game as a whole. Like I think that having like young alliances come up and like do interesting things is really important for this game. I don't think there should only be mega blocks. And renting just just you know chokes that in the cradle, right? There's there when there's no space because it's all used to, to fill the coffers of like one, two, or three mega alliances, then these these nascent groups never start out, like you know it, you know or you can't transition from sort of a low sec, ten man PVP corp to an out null sec alliance when there's no space and, and to do so would mean having to take on a mega block. So it it it, it actually smothers. Like a lot of the creativity and it keeps people out of this game so i think it's a bad thing for uh is renting is bad not only because it supports botting but because of those other reasons well as a member of yeah. a, a new a new fledgling alliance i agree with you i suppose on that point 
I would like chat, to, I do mega want box, to ask, like, ask yeah, like, we are, we are mega box. I'm not, I'm not saying that mega box are, are bad. I'm saying that's not all that should exist. Well, I think that, yeah, I mean, that that's true. And I think, you know, that's a really noble kind of way to look at it. At the same time, I think Eve, Eve's mechanics right now are so pro giant empire building that it, it's already extraordinarily difficult for those smaller groups to survive. And, you know, that comes from, you know, essentially at least up until CCP decided to destroy the economy. Uh, you know, you basically, to keep up with everybody, need oracles. And to have oracles, you need some kind of super cap umbrella or some kind of umbrella, something, right? And these smaller groups, I mean, you know, the reasons that like some of these smaller groups, these null cycle alliances uh, in tribute and veil and all that su didn't succeed may not have been directly because of the economics in the game. But we're certainly tied to it. If everyone well, has money, they're not, you know, there's there's no problems, right? So like, he, like, here's how I look at it, and this is, you know, I'm gonna sound crazy here, but if you look at what has pushed people to get, what has pushed people together, blackout was one of the biggest things that pushed people together. If you look at the game pre and post blackout, if you look at the amount of alliances and coalitions, it's gone down. The game is completely out of fucking balance. We need more co. There needs to be a lot more smaller alliances and smaller coalitions. And that's one thing that I am a huge proponent of is I'd want to see, you know, RC probably, you know, take their own region and be their whole, you know, you know, have their own little group down there. I want to see XIX split off from Legacy in all honesty and not be attached to us and do their thing. You know, I would love well, to see... Well, they're going to be Hort's... cut off soon. See, I, I, would, I would love to see, and I know this sounds crazy, I'd love to see Horde split off from the rest of PanFam. I would love to see they that won't. because that'd be, that'd be cool. They you know? can't... They never could. Oh, I know they never could, but that'd be cool. You know, I'd love yeah, to see that. There's some there's some belief in Horde that like if they split off from NCPL that um that we would go just kill them. Like and so they're like it's, it's sort of a, a you know, prisoner's dilemma or whatever. Do you you know um do you like uh, you know you know they, we might want to I, I don't yeah. wanna uh, I, I don't wanna make too many comparisons with that, but Horde leaving Panfam is roughly the equivalent of Karma Fleet leaving Goonswarm. Like that. Right, that's, that's why I said it'll never happen. It, it's not gonna happen. These these organizations are too entwined at this point. I think you could be surprised by that. Like I think yeah, I don't, you, I don't, you don't know what goes on with that. Yeah, I don't really agree with that either. Like I I know the personalities involved at least. I was not so I was not directly in any way involved in like any kind of command with Panfan ever, right? But I've directly, you know, talked to these people. And and I don't know if the personalities are necessarily such that that, that is carved in stone. I would I would say that. I'd say yeah. something significant would have to happen for that to happen, but I I'd say like it's not carved in stone. One thing I was wanted to talk about was what Loki was saying a little earlier about it's hard it's hard for a small group to survive and break out, and I agree, but I also think that like when I look at a lot of these small groups, uh, it reminds me of um, uh, <laughs> like there's this time called the Cambrian explosion. It was when all, like all this life on Earth was becoming multicellular life was becoming uh, you know active, right. yeah, yeah. and there's there's these like creatures, and it's like well I have 38 legs very long there are all these creatures that evolved in sort of ridiculous configurations and they weren't they like got out 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 competed and like when i see the leadership of a lot of these groups that it, it's very bad like it, it's very bad and that's and, they, and so some of it is just you know they're getting out competed but i think a lot of it is there's like a lot of first mover benefit like the guys who are running these mega blocks now they got to start the game when people didn't know what the best way to do things was right so they got to make mistakes and learn and then later on they were you know they were able to uh, you know, learn on the job. And, and if you're trying to start a new alliance or break out now, you, you either sort of have to learn from, the, you know, the wisdom of these people and, and try to do some things better, or you can go your own way. But the people who go their own way, you know, uh, 99 out of 100 are not going to be Elon Musk. They're going to be, you know, uh, Nikola. Right, right. But uh, when you when you look at you've passed you history and i'm going to bring this up for reference if you haven't seen the time lapse video of all the the sov in null sec of eve the the what was it the 15 year time lapse or something like that if you go look at that and you you look at things like just sov mechanics you see history repeating itself when triple a fell 
when uh, Legion of XX Death uh, didn't wasn't that great. You know, when when big when when the CFC first Bob. fell before we were Imperium, when Bob fell, perfect example, right? And you look at history maps of Sov's past, and you see that once these uh, big mega blocks are are chunked up, a lot of smaller people come in. Um, and then smaller people will fight smaller people for the SOV. And then one small group ends up becoming bigger. And then people leave one side, join the other side. And then that it, that just creates a new mega block five, six years down the line. Mm -hmm. I think that's what and and what that's what made me really laugh a while ago, all at the beginning of this war, when Pappy had this huge idea that as soon as we Goons were eradicated from the game that they were going to own all this Sov from Amencia all the way to Delve and own the entire, you know, Serenity 2.0, Perfect Utopia. And it's like, no, because you're going to have at least like 20 low sec alliances that are going to see open Sov and they're going to be like, hmm, maybe we should dip our toes in an all sec. And then you're going to disprove yourself. You're saying you either die you here or move on kind of, become a villain? Oh my yes. God. Yeah. That is like the bad, third that's bad, the third time I've had. So you no 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 Mike, no. I have been what trying bad, to get this question for 20 minutes. God, I've been it's been fun listening to you guys. But I wanted to ask Asher um what he you know comments on the brave situation. Cause everybody on Tuesday was trying to make some weird I don't know thing about how it's hip hypocritical or whatever to point out their failings but um, Brave basically is caved in in a month and a half of pressure from less people than us. Now Asher do you have any comments on this one or uh, is the you know do you did you predict this would happen or do you think that they have a chance of like fixing their shit? They caved in? Say that again. Have they caved in? Like, what's the evidence? There? Uh, well, they're caving because they have no money, and, and I've got it on some uh, good authority that uh, this has been happening for months. Yeah, the no, money issues. Maybe, maybe huh? like. I mean, here's the thing. Maybe a lot of people thought Brave was something it wasn't, right? There's they're a group who never purges, so on paper they look really good. And their guy, who we assumed was the leader when it came out, you know, doesn't appear to be at the reins, right? Like, or, or has a lot less power than we thought. So they're a group that seems to be sort of on cruise control, and you know, um, and maybe they are what we thought they were, uh, and we let them get away with it. But um, I think that you know, I think that Brave is was probably overestimated. And now they're probably being a little underestimated, and I think that um, um, you know, they've uh, you know they've made their bed. Like they've had a lot of opportunity to join a group that won't treat them this way. And like at this point, I just I just have no like no uh, sympathy. Opinion. Yeah, sympathy is a better word. Yeah, it's just like like they, these these dudes are literally um, you know being coming home to their their drunk tappy. And then paying for pings and just getting treated like total crap, uh, and, and you know whatever, whatever they've had more than enough opportunity to go do something else. And I don't necessarily mean with us. Like I know that we've offered them multiple times before, and they have people who don't like us. Fine, but there's like lots of people, and like at this point, it's just it's just more sad than anything else. That's what I wanted to to check in on because I just find it. You know, that's one of my arguments was is everyone's was trying to say like you shouldn't pick on brave i'm like we're not we're well, look though brave, we, we just talked just we just talked about out that everything looks terrible <laughs> we just talked brave about how... alliance, and then horde is much more so right horde was formed after braids brave so this whole like brave is a newbie alliance thing and has some special protection that's also garbage i don't know to what degree and i don't actually know this but to what degree brave is able to retain their membership versus horde i i kind of think i have a feeling uh that i don't know for sure uh that horde is able to retain more members and they, they have a super cat fleet they have 
you know, yeah, so what bit happens, kind of what ha- yeah, what happens is, is like a lot of the brave guys who last a while just get poached into test. I know, I know that. So, so the, the like, cannibalization, and I've talked about this on Trash Talk Tuesday, the cannibalization of the coalition is probably an issue, right? And before any of this started, my 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 thesis was there is intrinsic value in keeping your allies strong. Uh, I, I love this. I love hearing about this because, you know, we, we hear about this. We hear about how goons are the terrible people. But then we hear about, you know, brave guys being poached into test with, by and large, no objections. And, uh, you know, in Goon Swarm, we have these poaching rules where people can't poach between corporations. <laughs> and also, <clears throat> d- d- don't I don't knock. Know. I'm I'm getting there. Like we also have a a general rule in which alliances cannot poach corporations between each other, and we check in with our alliances. Uh, at the very least, Goon Swarm does. We we check in with other alliances before we take in corporations from our allies, like. We we ask these questions. You know what are the comical the, thing is? Are these it, questions not being asked in these other alliances? That, that's all I have to. That's all I have to say. It's like, are these questions not being asked? Someone said, like, you know, with with no, what was it like that? Brave didn't appear to even be angry about the poaching, but you know, you know what what if they were, you know, and they 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 said, you know, how upset they were. How how would Tappy even punish them? Would they like take away? The money that they get from TTC, or money from oh, TTC. Wait. or or, they or, or would they money. or would they start charging them for the Intel relays? Like what what would you know? I'm just trying to think of all the ways Tappy could punish Brave <laughs> for their insubordination. Thank you uh, for inviting me to a front, yes, a front seat row to the green propaganda machine. I love it. No, no, that's, that, that's actually a very serious question. I mean, I mean actually, he's making he's making points. Yes, he's making points. He, uh, I, I understand the point. Uh, I mean, point. Are they incorrect too? I mean, no, Loki, no, no, no the, points, the points are made I, on fact. Absolutely, on fact. And I, I just, I don't know, I just find it funny the way. I, I have it's a, a combination of which, Loki, I think. That, that you've you're never been gonna, in the, you, No, no, you're going to love Loki, my Loki, you've my never been in the beehive, right? To, no, no, Dawn, you're going to love my next question to Asher. Asher, if an alliance, you know, in the Imperium doesn't agree with what we're doing, but how would we punish that alliance? Yeah, I mean, I, I I know that I know that Legacy would reject like the outright that they punish them, and, and it's it's more like that's not the way it works. Like you you work on on mutual respect and like um, yeah. See, that, this I'm is not... my point, and this is why I asked you that specific question, and I'd like an answer to the specific question. How would the uh, how how would Goon Swarm punish one of their allies? For... We don't have yeah, we don't, there's no mechanism to force anyone to do anything. Like we don't like. We don't. I mean, I guess, I guess we could. Like, we could just. I mean, the only the only thing we could do is we could kick them out of the alliance, like out of the Imperium. Like, I guess that's that's it. But um, uh, it's it's not like a it's not like a thing. It's like we, it, it, you know, we go to another alliance and say, hey, this is what we want to do, and and um, what do you think? And we come up with a plan. Like, we work on it together. And like every now and again, we've we've like have been totally on the wrong page or not the wrong page. We've been on different pages, and. You know, we've just sort of been like an agree to disagree thing, like you know, and we'll 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 you know figure it out next time. Like these these, these relationships are sometimes messy; so they're they're not always perfect. But I think it you know it speaks like well to us that we've had uh, you know like people okay. with initiative fashion right. like with us for a really so, long time. On that front, then, what would you? How would you describe our relationship uh, across the 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 Vietnam? situation like th- this entire like, war where we feel like i'm being to... with water what would you like me to drink dirk so asher do you like clear this. water or yeah asher do you like clear water or you do like uh the black water that they're making now you guys talking about i don't know what vietnam is i don't know what this water is like I feel like such a boomer. Have you guys like your whole like language? Like I don't, okay. I don't know. This is like the most lit conversation, <laughs> and like I just don't get it. Uh, You're only older than me by a little bit. Vietnam, Vietnam is, is just is this what Delve is. Oh, okay, yeah. but like seriously, Vietnam, Vietnam. in in terms of 
how things have gone for us. You know, we've been forced back into Delve, but we're we're still fighting. Are, are you feeling like oh, like we're, like we're struggling as a coalition? The, uh, like if you look at the, the, the wholeness of this war, it doesn't like it doesn't matter what happens now. Like if they roll up one DQ, destroy everything we have, and then camp us out in the NPC delve for six months, it won't matter at this point. Like we've put up uh, a stronger defense than any group has ever done for their home in this game that I'm aware of. Certainly since I've been playing. So let's say for the last decade, I don't maybe in the in the in the two thousands there was something like this, but. You know, you just compare it to recent history where, you know, once we knocked over one key system in tribute, NC just pulled up everything and said, haha, you can't make us glass, we glass, you know, <laughs> like they just like like they just quit, right? Like and that yeah. that's been standard yeah. operating procedure for everyone, uh, you know, for the last five years at least, and certainly it wasn't unusual before that. So we put up like a stronger mm -hmm. defense, done a better job against odds that are very rarely seen in this game that I have no like our place in history is already assured. Well, and then Brave is like struggling. They they have been able to make money at home for months during this war with little to no pressure from anybody. And the mo I don't think that's moment true. people move in, they like can't. It is true. They've been struggling with money for months. Yeah, because from, they were getting because they, they, they were getting dropped by simple farmers in in other groups. Like you literally, simple had, farmers would be the same equivalent for Israd to us. Yeah, but don't, you don't. So don't shut the fuck up. Was, and let me speak instead of just interrupting me. Thank you. Um, no, what I'm trying to say is, if there was other groups there doing damage, good sacks, all of those groups. It wasn't just like a month's worth of pressure. It was more than a month's worth of pressure. It's been a couple months of people starting to fuck with their riders. Then their members get annoyed at that. Then you have a big group of fucking in it roll in and start fucking shit up and you see what happens. It wasn't just instantly in it deploys gone. Like, I hate that notion of in it deployed and then everything. And then There's other groups fucking around there, like our Russian friends. For, I mean, I had, a, I had a legacy work tackle three days ago, dude. Like, yeah, you know, like, so like I'll find, I'll take the kills. I think, um, uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's also, I think it was uh, also a logistics problem because like with the, with the leaks, one of the things that Norman said was that, you know, just on like fuel blocks alone, moving shit from catch over to Quirius would be impossible. Right. So that notion is that most of Brave's crap is sitting in hangars and catch and not on their lines where they need it to be. So when you think about it, is that all the crabs and all the industry people and whatnot and Brave, they're making shit. They're just leaving it in hangars. And, and now they're at a point where they can't move it out of those hangars without massive risk of death. And that's one of the things. It's kind of like cutting off that supply line, Well, I, which is one of the things that's helping screw them over. It seems to me that this is a systems issue. It's like they probably need more people willing to step up and coordinate things i think if they had that i and it's perfectly possible that they're going to get that but i just think that if they had that and they had a, a little bit more information they're more just on top of the situation at hand i i feel like they could be making better more informed decisions come up with better strategies like i think it's that there's just not a lot of people who are actually stepping up you're and, right if you can figure out how to make like a group of people, like more and more people step up, competent people, you'll be the greatest leader in the history of all Eve. Because that's the problem. It's like, how do I make people do unfun work for free? Like I mean, that's always the issue. Like, how do I make people do shipping for free? Like, and, and not uh, just not just for a month, for years, and have people complain to them. That's, that's right. a serious question well, about that. Actually. My philosophy, my philosophy was just you. You don't make them do it for free. And like, I run my corp like I don't know some free enterprise ultra libertarian like free market whatever i don't charge taxes i want everyone to make money you make money but guess what the guy who's doing that jump fighter run you're paying him you're paying him to do that and he's going to do it and he's going to collect money from like six or seven different people or five different people or four different people and he's going to go up and he's going to come back and guess what he's incentivized now to do it again right and you just got your shit like really fucking fast so that's cool so now you're going to go and i don't know if you're mining or if you're riding or what the fuck you're doing you're going to go do more of that so you can generate more income so that you can pay the guys so that you can get your shit and it kind of feeds into itself and that's honestly i don't i don't know if it works but i'm trying to do it 
Yeah, I know. I mean, it's definitely been tried before. And here's the problem, I think, with that is that um, is that you're not there's an there's an externality that you're not accounting for when you're playing Eve, and that and that's that I could be working another hour and and getting the equivalent of this. And so for things like jump freighting, where some people are like 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 Germans, where they do like drive a truck simulator after work, like they enjoy that. But there's very few people who like setting up pauses and even less who like setting up a thousand of them, right? And, and the same thing for a lot of the work that has to be done, like fueling and that kind of thing. And if you're paying someone for that and, and that, that's that's the, the motivation, they're going to quickly realize that I'm getting paid, you know, 250 million isk an hour or whatever it is and, and that, that's 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 like 84 cents right right so then you have that, to that, you that, yes that. you have to find someone who, ha who believes in it for a reason beyond getting paid right so you need to establish a corporate identity you need to make people buy into like why is well that your corp is different and why is it different right and, right, so uh, now, I mean, now you're talking. Now to... you're talking about paying them with other things. It's like, it, it's like sure. you could you could pay a mercenary this amount of money and they won't do it. There's this, like a, a suicide mission. But if you offer someone a medal if they succeed, they might do it. Right? That's that's the, you're, you're you're giving them satisfaction in a different way, a non-monetary way. I, I, I think the entire point is the like June Swarm has suddenly. I, I say suddenly over over many years, Goon Swarm has developed G Soul. And GSOL do a bunch of logistics work for the Alliance. And that's not like carting shit from Jita to 1DQ or whatever. That's structural support. But GSOL have been doing this for no apparent reason, really. They don't get paid for this shit. They don't get, like, you know, like... They, they, there's no benefit to being in GSOL beyond... Being a member of GSOL. You yeah. yeah. showed out on Theta 3. Really? Yeah, that's shorter. According, so, according to Villy on Tuesday, if your logistics director tells you, no, we can't do this, so we can't go to war in this area, do the war this way, uh, that they're clearly bad, which that's I was just stunned. That's pretty at. true. I, I'd say Tuzzy would agree with that guy, and uh, I'd say that we would genuinely agree with Tuzzy on that position. I mean, if Tuzzy, if Tuzzy says there's something that like can't be done for this reason, we're, what we're going to say is, okay, what what can we do instead? Why don't you have a suggestion? And and if it's, if, it, if he's like, there's just it's impossible to do it this way, then yeah, we'd look for that. But I mean, there's there's been times where you know we're we're like. You know, it, this, there is a logistics problem, and how do we solve it? And and, and you know, ninety five percent of the time, it feels like we can solve it. But I think we also have people who buy into our mission. You know, whatever it is, like you know, you, you talk about that, like you talk about, oh, you know, Goonies drink the Kool Aid or whatever. Good, like good. That's why people are here eight months later in like in like a grinding hell war. Uh, where we're, we're outnumbered, where we're, in my opinion, just about everyone else would have broken already, right? So you need to have that belief system. And, um, you know, if it was based on that we're plexing your account, you need to do, you need to do 30 hours of work this week to have your account plex. Like that, that's a thing where like, that, that doesn't make sense. Like they're, they're, it's not, it's not a logical payoff. So there has to be some reward, whatever that is and however you define it beyond the monetary. And that's where like a sense of, like you were saying, oh, you're believing your core peer alliance or whatever that, that, that is actually a, a reward. And that's what you harness when you, when you find someone for a group like this. I think right, that's for the, the magic. Welcome to the tribe. It's, it's welcome the magic. to the tribe. Yep. It's a ma that's the magic of Eve, though, in my opinion. Like, literally that. It's my alliance. We're on a campaign. Like, when I first started this game, like, people told me about six-month campaigns, and they probably never happen again because the game is dying, and it's going to suck. But, you know, like, why the fuck do people put themselves through that? Why do FCs, like, so why do you go out every day and and blow shit up or get blown up or fight over constellations and whatever and put yourself in probably extremely bad IRL positions, right? Uh, to, yeah, no but... Down because we enjoy it. That's the only right, reason. but I mean, there's a creation... There's a creation... No, but there's like this sense of... It's not even a sense of duty. It's like a sense of belief in, in your group and then these people you're, become you're, you're close. more you're, than just your friends. You were almost right. You said belief, but I think the, and it, it was almost right. But it's belonging. I think that's actually what it is. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Sure. There you go. That. Yep. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on that. No, uh, Asher is absolutely spot on. Uh, like I, I haven't FC'd 
uh, properly in probably like eight months at this point. I feel bad about that. Trust me, Dirk, because... you've never have seen properly. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. Th- thank you, 23rd best FC in the Imperium. <laughs> I, I love your judgment and always have. Uh, but, you know, like I, I haven't FC'd properly in the Imperium for eight months at this point. And uh, that's that's been because of my real life. That's just remember your name on circumstances in months and years. Yeah, yeah. circumstances outside of my control yes. have mean, meant that I haven't been able to dedicate hours at a time to this shit. But we do it because we give a shit. Because this is our community, and we're not going to let it collapse. And that was why I FC'd before this whole thing happened uh before we we started in this hell war you know i've seeing you know over the last few years it's just because i give a shit about this community i i love this community there is nothing now because it provides that, enjoyment for you right i mean that's what it boils down to there, there is nothing that could attract me away from these guys at this point. This is my forever home and uh, as as fucking sappy as that sounds that's where it's at. I was looking at our FC numbers I was looking at our FC numbers and like that this was from the start of the war how many fleets someone had run and uh, and it was like really close to like Ziff's Law which is what like how language is distributed and so like I think that there's just it's just like almost an inevitability that you're going to have certain people who are going to be really on the, defining the curve, and then oh, there's going to be a long tail of people who, uh, at this point, like the long tail is someone who's done thirty fleets since the start of the war, because uh, yeah, they sure. they might be you know they might be on on our FC list, uh, they might be like the eighty sixth most active FC, and that's the guy who's done thirty fleets. But um, you're going to have uh, sort of that distribution of people who are. Uh, extremely dedicated for one reason or another and uh, people who uh you know are very active you know and then it goes down then you have like i said the tail of people who fc you know twice a month or or three times a month when they can because that's something they enjoy and they want to help out where they can but they don't have the time or or for whatever reason uh, other reason they can't do it i mean Drusus narrow mentions that i do other space jobs as well and that's true but i feel bad about not being involved as an FC. I I appreciate that I can't dedicate the the hours to FCing, but at the same time, I feel bad about not doing it. It's something I really enjoy doing, and and I I haven't been able to do it in a a long while, and I hate it. I I hate that I can't do it. So one thing I'll say is, and like, fuck that. So like I know like from my perspective and I don't know, like I, I've been FCing since the start of this war pretty much well, since first Jeff, I have not been constantly FCing as much as humanly possible. And like there'll be nights where I'm like, ah, oh, I'm gonna take the night off, blah 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 blah. And then Discord PM, it's like, hey, are you around? I'm just like, yeah, I'm getting out of bed and I'm going to do this. Cause it's just like for me, it's like I love FCing and I like I love ha- our line member base because they are awesome. Like generally, like I will have fun fleets, and I've been loving the ones we've had in USTZ, where we'll be in the middle of a fight, and then you'll just be like sporadically poking the enemy FC with like you know when he locks, you'll be like, oh hey, he's locking me, and then just bullshitting with the fleet a little bit. And it's just been it's been a lot of fun for me, and um, it's one of the things that I've definitely enjoyed about this war is just you know the amount of crazy shit we've done so far and i think we will continue to do more crazy shit now i want to shift a little bit um because we're getting close to our normal end time even if we go over a little bit it's okay but uh since there's some tacticians in the room i wanted to get your opinion on the dev blog today not necessarily about the marauder thing because i don't think that's going to apply to anything we do but about like the mobile sino beacons and the the uh, Dictor changes and the Wubble changes. I, Has I anyone looked at it? Or <laughs> so, so quite, do, you, do you mean the Wombles, Don? What is a Wubble? Do you mean a Wubble? The, 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 the Wubble, wubble. change. Wubble. So it's so, so, a Wombo. A Wubble. Wombles. <laughs> the Wombles. Wombles changes. 
Oh, Normally, I would say whatever Lord Asher says, but I, we said Wubbles first, so. Um, just, so just the, the for those of you who have not read it, the Wubbles have gone from 30% with a 10-kilometer range to 50% with a 15-kilometer range. Do you think that's going to make them actually applicable in fleet fights? More applicable. You just got to use them, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. Well, yes, the answer is yes. More applicable, okay. The, the best yeah, especially... Especially when it comes to something like hack superiority, one of the oh, oh. one of the smaller sides of hack superiority has been slowing people down. Whether you have bombers doing void bomb runs or the wobbles, or uh, or you know tackles scramming a, an FC to slow down the rest of the fleet that's approaching that FC, it's it's been something that's in the hack superiority meta for a while. And I think we're going to see a lot more application of that with the new wobble chains. Well, we're going to see a lot more warp in savers and such using them. So from the person who's actually in charge of if that happens or not, Asher, how do you feel about these changes? Um, I mean, I think the wobbles are good. I don't know if they're going to be able to really slow down hacks. You have to like position yourself in a really, it's really hard to do. Um, so, but I think they'll be used more. Um, if you know what you're doing, it's you not guys too are, hard. You guys, are, you guys are talking about the stasis. Uh, yeah. Probes? Yeah. Okay. Wubbles. I was like, yeah. Wubbles. What the Wubbles. fuck are you guys talking about? Wubbles. All right. Cool. Wubbles. All right. I'm on the same Call page. Call them Wubbles. <laughs> well, um, see, what do you that's, think about that's, that? Then? It's an interesting thing because uh, basically the meta is go really fast. And then if you can find something that has a larger uh, application range and you can make it go faster than the thing that goes fast, then like that is the new meta. And so catching dudes on gates with these stasis webs, honestly, is probably going to be OP as fuck. And I, I look specifically at smaller groups who use them against mutants uh, in like the, I don't know, the, the high speed CERB kind of thing that they do. And I mean, you, you know, <laughs> give me a hundred, give me a hundred kills easy, and like let's go. And that's literally well, what this could possibly be. But I mean, they're, they're it, much it, better it at choke points like gates. Like that's where they're going to have a lot more power. Exactly, exactly. And so I mean, that's that's what I would do with them. But I mean, you know, this was already kind of like I, I was already using them before they got slightly better. So now that they're better, I'm still going to keep using them because they're kind of anti-meta on the meta. So maybe, I mean, maybe. Uh, they could be used in a fozzy sov kind of way, as long as the people that you're fighting with are like in uh, in one of these these counters to mutants or something like that. I mean, or I mean, you know, you could probably use them against mutants too. But I mean, I don't know. It depends. Um, awesome. Asher's been on the "gotta go fast" thing for years, head of time, head of everybody when it comes to hacks and "gotta go fast." Gotta go well, fast, man. No, no yeah. he's not ahead of everyone. He just loves to go fast. Well, you can do it before everybody else. It, just, it was just by, all the crack. By definition, if you're going fast, you're ahead of people. So I'm, I'll, I'll accept it. Um, <laughs> I, I just looked it up, by the way. Since the start of the war, Mike Flood has run 275 fleets. Oh my so, goodness! Is that counting what I've run on my alt? <laughs> yeah, I did Mike and Tom. Oh, yeah. I would have expected more. <laughs> 275 is not enough for you. No. <laughs> With the amount of fleets no. I can, like, holy no. fuck, how that... I don't no. know. You, I just you, know that you Asher just up crashes it. your own fleets, Mike. So, like, I don't go, usually go. pat my own fleets. Cord usually does that. That's usually, your issue. You don't do Ash shit yourself. But I also, Asher like... Asher crushes the <laughs> statistics, though. But, but uh, so, sorry, uh, like, what, what do you think, really, about the incoming changes, Asher? Like, not, I was not supporting the, the Marauder ones, changes. But... I, that I was... I, I had I had like suggested like I would like to see the ADC, which I think is very overpowered on hacks, uh, be added to Marauders, and just that you can have an ADC or a Bastion module, but not both. Um, um, and if you made Marauders slightly more slightly less expensive, so they're not like 1.5 billion each, and you gave them an ADC, they can actually have uses outside of PVE. But then, if you saw Rise's comments on the thread, he was like, "Oh, we're not we're not balancing Marauders for PVP, I, which is disappointing." I, I did see that. Um, I also saw Grath Pelkin's comment. Yeah, he didn't like it. He 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 made a lot of good commentary, in in my opinion, like. But what what do you think about Grath's commentary there? You know, he was suggesting that, hey, 
Bas uh, Bastion should not be as powerful, but potentially a T2 battleship should have T2 resist. Or yeah, resist, I agree. I agree. They nerfed the resist a little hard. Um, um, I mean, there is one sort of like unique uh, thing that a Marauder can do now is if you if you give it short range guns and the Bastion bonus, it's it's sort of like a Lashak, except it doesn't have to spin up. So it, it, you can use them sort of like baby dreads. Um, where you can get on top if you can get on top of something and keep it from moving, those Marauder uh, Bastions, I'm sorry, the Bastion Marauders will uh, will do a lot of damage and immediately. So not they don't want to spool up like a little shack. So um, you'll be able to just just punch through things. Now I think they made this with PVE in mind, but yet you could see them used like like I said like baby dreads and your your siege cycle such as it is is only 90 seconds and then you can MJD away and warp off. There's, there's also, that, that's really interesting, but there's also a, a second point that I want to jump in on before any of my other colleagues here jump in with it. Um, there's also a notice on the devlog that the revelation will be seeing a reduction in power grid. I don't, I don't know why it's there. 780 to 700 megawatts. Yeah. Uh, an ex extra large beam power need reduced by ten thousand megawatts, and an XL beam CPU need reduced by ten. Uh, so, do do you think that that's gonna mean that we're gonna see a uh, a, a significant dreadnought nerf in the next, you know, balance pass? Does it no, mean that this the is... Sabre has had an issue? What, 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 do you, what do you think that means in terms of on, the way on the, that this... On the Revelation, the Revelation is just them saying this is this dread is too powerful, right? And like there, there are alliances that literally run only Revelations. And when you saw... Who was it recently? In Losec, they were using Revelations with like, with like um, um, Naglfar guns. Um, like, un so not getting a bonus, but they were just like, would rather put that on revelation. <laughs> like that was, that was sort of the, the tip off, right? Like, like that maybe these are really powerful. I do like, I mean, I dislike power grid nerfs for, um, for capitals because the parts are so expensive and refitting it is like such a pain. Um, but basically what they wanted to say with this nerf is that like the short range revelation that is with the short range capital guns or the Haas is too strong and the long range is, is, is balanced well enough. So they, they made it harder to fit the other two while giving a, a, a bonus to the, the beams. And I actually haven't done the math. I don't know if it's, if it's like fitting neutral with the beams as it is, but um, you know, whatever it is, that's basically what they're saying. They're saying that, that the long range is, is okay, but the short range Haas and short range uh, capital guns are too strong on the revelation. That's what it's saying. Yeah, our bomb dreads, like my bomb dreads don't need to be refed, um, but the Haas are, you know, going to have to get re-engineered. And I, I looked at this primarily as a Haw um, rebalance, essentially, or whatever, nerf not necessarily a revelation dread nerf. It's specifically targeted at Haas, in my opinion, or a close range uh, bomb jets. The Haas yeah, are so, really uh, good, like really freaking good. Yeah, and so are yeah, T2 they're, uh, they're short insane. range. They're insane. Yeah. I yeah, literally, had a, I literally just had a court meeting where I'm like, okay, everyone needs to get into revelations. And now I'm like, well, let's, 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 let's hold on a tick and look at this. Okay, well, I, I got to cut it now. No, 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 don't. Real, real quick. No, Give because me five Eric minutes. has to go. Give me you don't have five minutes. Eric has okay, to go Eric. soon. So. Eric, Eric, I hate you. Yeah, um, we'll blame I, Eric. I do. You, you can have five minutes, Dirk, because I um, like you and everybody talks over you anyway. Okay. <laughs> I, I love you, Eric. That's not uh, even I, true. I did, I did just want to, you know, button real quick, because Asha and Loki have both been talking about this, and uh, Vili has just been in Twitch chat suggesting that Something should be neutral regarding this revelation. I was, I was talking about the long range guns and the, how the, how the fitting works out. So I think that's what he's referring to, I believe. Uh, he, he was suggesting that uh, it should be neutral for long range guns. Correct. That's what we were talking so, about. So, so we're all agree in, in agreement that realistically, this is not a positive change. It's just a generally okay change. It's a nerf to short range dreads to some degree. It's short range revs to some degree, uh, depending on what kind of fit you're using. And for long range, it's 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 not really a change. But um, I think pretty much everyone who knows anything about caps, if you asked and said, what is the best dread knot, they would say the revelation. So it was well-deserved. 
And by the way, the revs okay. sucked for a long time, so it did have a time in the sun. It used to be, I'd, I'd say, probably the worst red, but it was it, it wasn't yeah. the best Nagle one. That's for sure. All right, cool. So, uh, so Dawn, final thing for on to final thoughts. Well, final thing from the dev blog is the mobile Sino beacons. They say they're for P- they're not for PvP, but I can already see the wheels turning in everybody's head the moment they put that out there of how can I make this work. So it's not going to be for hot PvP. Like you're not going to use it like like oh, I'm going to drop one next to a capital fleet and wait for it to spool up. But I mean, you might use it to move your PvP fleet. But it is like I, I did feel bad for like industrialists who like uh, you know they're having to run you know an Arazu or a Falcon and lose it every time. Like that was pretty unfair. And this that's what this is meant to address. Like I I, I always thought that was sort of a ridiculous requirement. So hopefully these will be you know relatively cheap. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be like what 10, 10 million each. Uh, I don't know exactly what number they'll settle on, but hopefully they're relatively cheap. And I, I don't think they'll have any uh, EHP. That's kind of what they suggested that it won't have uh, any EHP. And regarding the dreads, or sorry, the the dictors, we didn't say much about them, but it's, it was basically just sort of a balance pass to make um, all the uh, all the dictors that are not sabers a little better, rather than nerfing the saber down to their level, was what it seemed like for me. Well, what I see with the beacons possibly is traps because you cannot see. I, I feel like they're going to send him up just like a Sino and him because you can't see a Sino and him on your overview unless you're on grid. So I'm assuming the Sino beacons going to be the same thing. And they said it's deployable on structures. I, I all I see are traps and uh, setting up for potentially even botting supers if you can get someone to sit there and watch it you don't need to have a sino dedicated anymore you can use a blue character to just drop it and no one will ever know until they kill the thing i guess e and players will, will make a like we'll, we'll find a way to use anything to their advantage right so right. yeah you'll have lots of stuff like that um and i had thought about that that's a good point you can you could catch like a ratting super with, with one of those but my guess is that they'll quickly update the bots so if they see one of those on grid they'll warp off so i, I don't yeah, think it'll make that much of a difference yeah yeah. That, that's just going to be a fact of life. Um, any, anyway, so uh, Eric, yeah. you've got to disappear off soon. Um, let's transition over to final thoughts. Um, so we'll Asha, start up at the what, top. What, yeah, Asha, what have you got for your final thought? Oh, thank. I, I usually like usually they ask me ask last. Sorry, ask me last. So um, I was just like te- yeah, my friend. My, my friend just texted me, "Who's your favorite chick in Mortal Kombat?" So I was thinking about that instead. And oh, was, who's your favorite chick in Mortal Kombat? That can be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come out of left field here, but Shiva, the the, the Goro, the female Shiva? Goro with four arms. You like the four arms mm, with yeah. like the mohawk and everything? Yeah, have, you been, yeah. have, you, have you kept up with Mortal Kombat? Like, no, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm just. I'm just saying oh that you know. God. Four it's arms like... opens a lot of possibilities. That, means, <laughs> that does mean okay. more more and fingers. A lot of jurgens. <laughs> okay, Shiva for the for Asha's favorite chick in Mortal Kombat. Um, Dominark, Dominark, what's your what's your final thought? Uh, my final thought would be uh, congratulations to the Bastion for such a great uh, day. So, yes, that's a that toy. Was... Holy, fucking fantastic! Holy shit! And that's it's the like don't give up, guys, because um, I know that like where we're at in queries, we're fighting against big odds. We have to ref things 50 times to try and get it to go through. Bastion and them have ref that thing at least 30 times in the past five months, and they finally got oh, to kill it. They, 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 no, they that, is, that is per Bastion. Per they, Bastion. They got it to final okay, I ref asked them. five times. They, they've done but a they've lot of work But they've also reinforced that. it multiple so times. Yeah. Um, times it, was re- it, it was really good work. Anyway, I was, uh, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. He's done a great job out there. It all props to him. It's really good. Work. I'm sorry to like bust, uh, you know, bust in here, but I was actually told earlier today that uh, someone, like a husband and wife in the Bastion, had twins, and they named the the twins Asher and Villy. Oh, so wait a second. I hope not. Oh dear lord. Um. Okay. Uh. Congratulations, <laughs> Asher, and um. Docs, Docs, Just, what have you got to say tonight? Uh, don't really have much to say, to be honest. 
You you got no final thoughts at all after you. He never. Has, Who's your favorite team from Mortal Kombat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Asher, thank you for giving us another theta flash. Yes. Who's your favorite oh, chick in Mortal Kombat? Well, we didn't ask as, Asher. We'll ask him at the end, hopefully. As far as uh, like playing as a female character in Mortal Kombat, Katana is usually a pretty strong character, I guess. Who cares? Who's the hottest? What's the fucking question, man. Who's got the biggest I mean, Del. Okay, sure. Not many of them are really that attractive anyway, so. Del's um, like. Packing. He's too pointy. Uh, 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 moving on. Eric, your What's final thoughts pointy? tonight. Eric, please Eric, tell us something. I'm just putting the uh, the headset back on here, ladies and gentlemen. Who was just talking? Who Who is that great uh, accent? Doc's. Docs was talking, and Doc. please, we need you to tell us something else that is I want, positive in your final thought. Positive? Positive? I want to hear Doc say, peace, psychiatrist. I don't even know what you just said. Have you ever watched the Animaniacs? You sound uh, like the one Animaniac brother, I'm telling you. That's my final thought. You sound like the <laughs> one Animaniac brother who says, I'm going to go say the peace, psychiatrist. I'm telling you. I love it. So, it's such a great voice. So that's my final right. thought. Docs has a great voice. That's what I'm parting you guys with. He's he's my Ozzy Osbourne. Greg, your final thought? I, I had everything prepared to have such a fluff week on uh, Theta Thursday, and it turned into a hard-hitting news show, and I'm uh, actually pretty this, impressed. This was a hard-hitting news show. Yeah. <laughs> no. It never is. We're here to hang out. But we did not expect FC chat for an hour and a half. But it worked out. That's fine. So, uh, Loki, your final thought? Just because you guys invited us, right? You didn't, like, just force... We didn't, like, just force our way in here. Mike and no, I were just like, no. let's crash the theater Thursdays. No, so no Mike thing. did crash. So Mike I, crashed. I, I, I didn't ask Mike. Mike. Oh, no, Mifun asked, me, Mifun asked me earlier, and I was going to originally oh. be busy, and then I ended up, my plans got canceled, so. Uh, <laughs> hold it, you, hold it, hold it. I was going to be busy, but yeah. 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 After you were our main guest, <laughs> and then Loki was like, I had invited him on Tuesday, so I was like, hey, you know, yeah, why don't you that actually come on? They say we don't let baddies or neutrals come on. You weren't the, uh, Yeah. But you're still a guest. You're so a like, guest. so like, Dawn pokes me at like I don't know, like noon or something, and she's like, uh, "So you know, we have other people lined up, but if in case that doesn't work out, would you like to come on our show?" Oh wow, that's <laughs> <a> <laughs> I know, right? And then somehow I'm still um, fucking here. So uh, I mean, what okay. does that say about me? Right? Did, did it remind you of when rough. you got asked a prom rough. in high school? Is I, that how that went down? I do well, have to interject. I do have to interject real quick, just. Because I hey, hey, Eric, hey, you already had your five minutes. Eric's got a, a time period, so uh, Mike, what, what is actually your final thought? Wait, it was my final thought. Yeah, you yeah, forgot Loki. You, you yeah. did that. Anyway, no, 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 he, no. Okay, my final thought is nerf the fucking mune into the ground, CCP. Thank you. Nerf the ADC. Right. Dawn? Yeah, nerf the ADC. Dawn, what have uh, you got? My final thought is appreciate everyone coming on. And then Asher, how do you cut your sandwiches? How do I co- cut? Cut. Sorry. Yeah. How do you cut, cut your, your sandwiches? sandwiches. Uh, right, 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 right. Not, not diagonally, straight across the middle. Exactly. Straight across right. the middle. Like, uh, At least he gives crazy. a non-psychotic answer. Thank there we go. Uh, thank you very much, Eric, for hosting. Oh, anytime. And, uh, Banana Republic the, the, is These recruiting. guys will see you all next week. I may not be here, but who knows? But be quiet, chill, uh, then. Thank you very much, Eric. Yes, thank you. For yes, thanks, Eric. Leaving. You're welcome. Fune is going to be living under an underpass so, in Boston. I no, no. Uh, next week uh, or uh, uh, next week? I keep thinking it's next point. week. It's a uh, on Saturday. I move. So my final thought is uh, fuck test and good war. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Eric. Thanks to the Thank audience. You know, guys, yes, Dirk. Please kill it. Kill it. It's all kill over. It. Yeah. Hit, hit, Thank hit, you, everybody. Hit the button. Kill it. Should we play music he, again? He, Dirk, did you see? He started pushing. He started us off just like he does push to talk. No intro, and just we're just talking about. Sh-
It's your show. You and interrupt. And we Eric like, to do this. You, and yeah, you, you know, know, what are we going to do? Intro. Make I know. Intro. <laughs> Holy shit. Every fucking time. I know. It's funny. Like, oh, oh my god. But, uh, yeah. Am I going to? Uh, I, I yeah, feel like I'm going to get time. I feel like I'm just going to be driving around in Boston in like a week and just see Mifun under an overpass be like, is that Mifun? He'll have a sign, we'll help camp for food. No, as, as, we as, can't as, hear a, very, you, Mifun. No. as a very serious point, Mifune needs to get a fucking desk. And a fucking chair. <laughs> Look, and just you've been moving on all his night. On his don't chair. you have I'm a desk? Sorry, you don't have a comfortable. Jostle everyone you around. Don't have a desk I'm still. Jostle. I'm around. sorry. All right, I'm sitting on is my bed. Show... Why is the show still on, Eric? I no, still... Are you ready? <laughs> we <laughs> are out of here. Yes. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Good night, hey, just enjoy it. You know, it's like the it's like free post show, baby. 